This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon and welcome to the Sunset Safari. The first 45 minutes will be on the school drive. And we'd like to welcome Kempsville Meadows as well as Central Elementary Schools, which will be joining us today. My name is Taylor and on camera with me is David. And we are out on the safari. So if you've got any questions about any of the animals out here, all you have to do is just ask your teachers. Now that bird that we were looking at just a moment ago, that is a very, very cool bird and it's quite nice to see them it's called a hummercorp and it's hunting at the moment it's actually looking for little frogs it's looking for little fish anything really that will be living in this water and I think it's got a good idea today because it's very very hot and where it's fishing is under a shady tree and I don't think that any of the fish or the frogs want, would want to be out in the middle of the pond where it's very hot I think they also would have come to the edge of that water see how it's moving so 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 slowly look at that and it's going to strike it with its beak now, Alex, it's a bit difficult to say how much water there would be on the reserve. Um, we don't have any big river systems, but we do have some small pans. And then we've got Treehouse Dam, Bovels Hook Dam, Twin Dams, which are filled with water. And also Chitwa, there's another big dam. So there's, there's lots and lots of water around at the moment. You can see, look how green the bushes. We've had lots and lots of rain over the last uh, few months. So water is not a problem. But... It's uh, autumn going into winter and soon we're not going to be seeing any more rain until closer towards the end of the year. So that means that all these pans and all the dams are going to start to dry up and then they, it'll be a little bit more difficult for the animals to find water and also the grass tends to disappear and some of the trees lose their leaves. So it's tough for the animals out here but they are able to adapt, they are used to it. It just becomes difficult for the birds, but luckily for them, they've got wings, so they can just fly to where there is another pan of water. Anyways, it's not just me taking you out on this live safari. Uh, Ralph is on bushwalk. Let's go and see if he's managed to find any tracks of the leopard. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome aboard for uh, the afternoon bush walk. We are uh, out here in the African bush, live coming to you from Greater Kruger National Park in the Sabi Sands. And uh, my name is Ralph Kirsten, and on the camera we've got Sebastian. And uh, don't forget to send us your questions and your comments on the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter and on the YouTube live chat and join us on this interactive bushwalk. Now, this, after, this morning there was quite a bit of activity um, around the leopards, but uh, not really being able to find them conclusively. So we've just tried to follow up and try to think where these animals might have moved. It's rather warm. It's about 29 degrees uh, Celsius, 83 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's rather hot and these animals potentially have moved into the shade, maybe where there's a little bit of water as well, and I'd like to uh, just have a very warm welcome for those, for the kiddies that have joined us from the Kemsville and the Central Elementary Schools um, remember that we're out here on foot we don't have the protection of a vehicle so we need to listen out with our ears and look with our eyes and smell and use all of our senses now, April, thanks for your question. The animals that we might see today, well, we're looking for uh, leopards, but uh, we potentially also see all sorts. We've just seen some impala run off in front of us. We've also heard uh, some, some birdies that are making a noise, which they normally make when there's maybe some predators around. So the little Franklins, which make an alarm. So we're going to try and see if those uh, Franklin have actually made an alarm because there's some leopard, or maybe they were just disturbed by an elephant um, but as we go you see how I'm walking I put my feet over all these things just so that we don't make too much noise um, but as I said no protection here and we need to just be very careful because we're not only worried about our protection we also want to think about the animals we don't want to hurt them we don't want to disturb them or anything like that so we're going to try and pick up on the trail of these leopards and while I do that let's head you on over to Brent who I think is also uh, looking for leopards 
Indeed, indeed, indeed. I am looking for leopards. A big welcome to all our schools today. My name is Brent. I have Senzo on camera and I can't wait to hear all your questions. Now, I've just seen the tracks of a young male leopard heading in an easterly direction. So I'm just making sure he hasn't come this way. And uh, hey, leopards, I've been watching him since he was a tiny, little, a tiny little baby. And uh, hopefully we'll able to find him for you for this school drive. So one of the ways we look for leopards is to look for their footprints in the sand. So if you see me looking funny and hanging my head out of the car like this, it means I'm looking for leopard tracks. Now, let's ask you a question. Oh no, there's a question from you. And a very good question from Maddie. Maddie would like to know, do we see different animals in the evening to, we, to the, what we see in the morning? Well, Maddie, it depends. When it gets dark, yes, we'll start seeing some nocturnal animals like owls, nightjars, and uh, genets. Some animals we will see throughout the day, but smaller nocturnal creatures we only really see in the evening. Um, and oh, if you get up at one o'clock in the morning, you can see them, but most of us are in bed then. But when we get out in the morning, we do tend to see different creatures to what we can see in the late afternoon. Okay, I think I see some tracks here, so I'm going to have to try to figure out what's going on. In the meantime, let's send you to Taylor McCurdy. Very exciting, Brent, already on the tracks. Uh, well, we are not on anything at the moment. We're starting to look for animals. So we're on a road called Batelier Road, and the ground is very hard here, so it's not a very good road for tracking. But we might see some cool birds along the way. So I'm checking very carefully. I'm also checking for some small antelope, like a daker or a little steenbok. They're not very big at all. So that's what we're going to be looking for down this road. And then if we don't find them, we will look for something else. Malaysia and Kai, you've asked, how do we keep track of the animals that are on the reserve? Well, it's very difficult to actually, especially you can see, look how thick it is. If you just look in here, you can't even see 20 meters. Hey, that's crazy. It's so thick. So it makes it very difficult at this time of the year. But also the animals have got a very, very, very big area that they can move around in. So... We're going to keep going so we can try and find something to have a look at. So essentially, all the animals around here, they live in an open ecosystem. So there are fences, but they're so far apart from one another. And they basically got about 8 million acres of land to move around on. Some of the animals just go wherever they want, wherever they want. It will depend where there's food and water. Like the birds, there's no insects around if they're eating insects and if there's no water like for that hammer corp or say for something like a heron uh, that likes water and fishes and water every single day they're not going to stay here they'll go away so if all the water dries up we probably won't see herons and hammer corps for a very very long time and um, because that's they well they need water to find their food so they're lucky lions and leopards uh, they tend to mark territories oh there's a bird with a bright orange eye Oh, and it's set up even higher and they mark and defend territories and he's gone bye bye birdie that was a cape glossy starling but it doesn't want to be on the show today and why well, don't me finish the leopards and the lions so they will use their voices they'll basically shout out and tell everybody that uh, they live in this area so lions will roar and leopards will soar they make this very raspy sort of noise it sounds like if you take a hand saw and you're sawing a piece of wood that's kind of what it sounds like and then they'll also use their their urine just they'll spray it up on trees um, or they also have glands in their cheeks which they'll use and they'll rub up on their leaves so they use different types of methods to try and mark their territory to tell the other animals that they are living around here um, so they don't really go anywhere Parker you've asked if I've seen a lion before there's a very pretty bird that one should sit there and um, I have seen a 
that one, sorry. There we go. I have seen a lion before. I've seen lots of lions, and who knows, maybe we'll be lucky. Brent was telling me that there's some lions sitting on the boundary somewhere. That has to be the most beautiful bird that we get to see every single day. And it is called a lilac breasted roller. So you can see on uh, the front of the bird, just underneath its head, its breast is a beautiful purple color. And it's got lots of blues on it. It also looks like it's got a little bit of green and a very, very white sort of eyebrow, if you will. It's not really its eyebrow, though. And this is one of the birds that likes to eat insects, but it eats other things too. I've seen pictures of them eating rats and mice. I've never seen them eat a rat and a mouse before, but other people have. And they also sometimes eat baby birds. I've also never seen that, but I've seen pictures. And then Brent, just this morning, saw a lilac-breasted roller with a snake as it was flying off. But I think the snake must have still been alive because it ended up dropping it. We didn't get a good view. So that's quite cool to see. So that's one of the most amazing things here. And we tend to see these birds all the time. They're always around. They're very common and very, very beautiful. Lots of people come out from all over the wor world just to come and photograph these birds. Very pretty. So when they catch their food, they don't really catch their food in the air like some swallows do and some martins do. What they do is they'll fly into the ground, or not into the ground, but into the grass, and try and catch some insects that way. So it's sitting up on the perch and looking down below, trying to see if there's anything moving around, which is quite pretty. I wish it would fly for us so you could see all the lovely colors. Addison, now you're wondering how small is the bird. It's actually not so small at all. It's probably about this big. I'm trying to maybe not quite the length of a ruler. So if you take your ruler and you maybe minus about that much, it'll probably be about that tall. So it's not a small bird at all. It's quite big. In fact, right, up we go with this little bumpy bump. Let's see what the next animal is going to be. I don't know what the next animal is going to be. But, well, hopefully we'll find something soon enough. Or maybe some footprints to find a leopard. Anyways, I know Rolf was walking from pan to pan and he's on his way to Treehouse Dam. I wonder what he'll find there. Well, thanks, Taylor. And yes, we're still hot on the pursuit of this leopard. But um, we, we don't stop um, uh, for anything randomly. We, we, we want to think about things where leopards would be at this particular moment in time. Remember, I did say to you that it's very hot at the moment. And um, we're looking for the tracks of the leopard, trying to think. We, we're moving between uh, ponds or little pans where there's water holes. And then we're crisscrossing the roads, trying to pick up their tracks. We've just recently spotted some fresh ones and I just wanted to indicate this plant that we see here very common plant that we find in Juma and this is uh, the magic quarry now uh, these quarry bushes there's lots of different uses for them but I'm not going to get into that now because we we have spoken about that before but very often we find leopards and lions hiding in bushes like this because it makes very nice shade and uh, they like to go and lie in that shade and when we see big thick bushes like this we need to be very careful because they can be lying inside there and we won't spot them because they're very camouflage now just one small use that I want to say is that if we had to spot a fire out here in the bush this is a very good bush that we can use the leaves we break off a branch and we can beat the fire out with that so Anyway, as I was saying, um, we're looking for these leopards, we're following up on them, and we, we're just going to, um, trying to pick up some more of those tracks. Now, Charlie, you're asking where leopards live? Well, we're going to try and find where they do live, but um, all leopards will stay in different areas according to their characteristic. They live in this entire bush here so they don't have a roof over their over their heads like we do at home they walking around um, they're hiding in the bushes like this they, they sort of stay in the shade when it's raining they maybe also go in underneath it and so 
something like this termite mound up front of us here that I'm going to go up now and have a look from it is a place that they'll also go up and have a look from. So they go up and we can often use this to see if we can find leopards or lions or even if there's any elephants around we can have a look and we can also come up here to get some height if there's elephants or lions around we can come up here on top of the termite mound and then we're bigger than them from here so it's always a good point to come and have a look and if we're getting followed by one of those animals, then we can come up here. And that's one of our safe places. Because if you're big and you're high, well, you do, um, uh, you're, you're a lot safer, aren't you? Ronica, you want to know how big are leopards? Well, Ronica, they're pretty much, I don't know if you know a dog uh, called a Great Dane. Um, that's a very big dog and th th some of them will take me right up past my waist but um, they're, they're quite a bit smaller than that so they may be like a Weimarana or a medium sized dog but they're very strong and uh, just trying to put it into perspective how big they exactly are a leopard will probably take me up just over my knee a big one uh, uh, and, a, and a medium sized one maybe up to about my knee uh, uh, about, about my knees area there so these animals and they also remember that's where the saying comes from if you do a leopard crawl well that's going through the bushes and staying very low to the ground we're going to try and uh, go through pick up the tracks and see where these leopards are so it seems like everybody's looking for leopard this afternoon. Um, I'm going to try and catch up with them, try and help them out because we're on foot. So it's a little bit easier for us to get closer to the tracks. Um, but uh, while we try and find those tracks, let's head you on over to Brent and see how his search is going. Well, not so well at the moment. I'm checking all the likely spots where we might see a leopard at this time of the day. But with the grass so high, they can just disappear. So I'm going to go back to the last footprints of the leopard I saw. Now Marshall, leopards eat uh, all sorts of different meat. So they eat squirrels, they eat turtles, they eat Inyala, which that is an Inyala over there, hiding in the bush. Let me just try to get you a view, which is a type of antelope. You see it sends forward back. So there is a young male Inyala hiding in the thickets. Now a leopard will eat them. There you go, you can just see its tail there. I think if we go back a little bit, we might see his horns, maybe. No, he's hiding in the thickets. Okay, let's see if we can get a better view of that Nyala from the other side of this thicket. Uh, so, we'll just answer Tristan's question quickly before we finish up on leopards hunting behavior. No, we do not feed the animals, Tristan. This is a wild area. Uh, we let nature take its course. So the animals have to catch their own food. So, uh, uh, and then leopards normally are more active as it gets dark in the evening uh, for the first two hours after dark and the first two hours before first light uh, are when they're most active but they will hunt at any time of the day if there is an opportunity. Yeah, let's see if we can see the Sinyala from this side. Oh, it's also very thick this side. Can we see him? Or is he still well hidden in the bush? There he is. A little bit better. He's still hiding behind some bushes there. As you can see his ears. Now, we use the Inyala and other antelope as ways to help us find leopard and lions. So if that animal sees a leopard, he'll bark, he'll go, bah! And basically telling all the other Inyala to be careful, there's a leopard around. And because they live in thick bush, they've got nice big ears like that. And you can see how it's listening to everything. 
There we go. Oh, he's going to carry on eating. I want to show you these leopard tracks quickly because they're just up around the corner here, very close by. So, and I'll show you what a pretty track a leopard has. Now, it's possible that he could be sleeping right next to this area where he was last seen this morning. And let me find his tracks for you. So they were just over here, the last tracks, the nice clear tracks I saw. There we go. You see them, Sands? Okay. So we can tell it's a male leopard from the size of the track. And he went this way. He left, he crossed the road here. So you can see he's got three little lobes at the back, and there is toes over there. So he went off the road here, and it's a male. A female would probably, even a big female, be half the size of this, even though this is a small male, a young male. Now, he, we checked all around here, so he might be sleeping in the little river here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down, and then I'm going to take a little quick walk um, into the bush there to see if I can maybe find him on foot. Uh, sometimes it's easier to find leopards on foot where you can walk slowly and see their tracks. So while I get going, let's go see Rolf, who's checking if he's gone for a drink. Yes, everyone, Brent is absolutely right. Sometimes it's much easier on foot. Uh, obviously, we can't uh, cover as much distance as they can on the vehicles. But what do we do when we're on foot? We, we you know, we, we want to come next to the water holes. Hopefully, they come down for a drink, and then we can pick up their tracks from there. But, um, you know, I always say, when you're in a vehicle and you're on a game drive in the African wilderness, well, it's almost like driving around uh, in the town, uh, around people's houses, and you, you look at all the things around uh, uh, in the town. When you go out on foot, it's almost like going inside people's houses. You need to be a little bit careful when you're inside people's houses because if they catch you inside their house, uh, they're not going to be very happy with you, are they? So when you're inside somebody's house, you want to be quiet. Now, I'm not teaching you to go into people's houses. I'm just saying uh, that that is the kind of situation it is where, when we're out here on foot. We're inside people's houses and and we're looking closely how they all live. So these animals, how do they live? Well, we need to be careful when we're looking at that. So we haven't got any fresh tracks of these leopards just yet, but we're still looking around the water where there's a little bit of soft mud where maybe an animal has come down to drink. Oh, there's a bird just calling up ahead of us, but I think it might be because our tracker has just bumped it. Now, Kelly, um, we can walk, well, it depends on, on how fast we walk and, and, and uh, uh, how many animals we see in that particular area. Sometimes we can walk 200 meters and we see all sorts of things. But other times, like today, I think we're going to have, to have to cover a lot more distance. I think we might do between 15 and 20 kilometers. So that's about 10, 12 miles. So we can put on some distance sometimes, and it's good uh, to stretch the legs. It's good, nice, fresh air. But when we are walking quicker and we're walking further, we need to be a little bit more careful because we get a little bit tired and your head starts to dip and you're not watching up in front of you there. And maybe you miss a little bit of an alarm call. Um, and the kind of alarm calls that we're listening out for now is any kind of little low growl or a little snort or an elephant that's breaking a branch. Those are the things that we need to be very careful of because we don't want to get too close to the animal and surprise it because then he might react. What do people do when you surprise them? They either fight or they flight, which means they fight or they run away. Most likely, they run away, but there's always the chance, uh, especially with different kinds of characters, that they want to fight, and we don't want to be in that kind of situation. So we just be very careful, we listen out all the time, and so we don't surprise them. And uh, that's the way we want to walk. 
Now, there's lots of plants that have got all sorts of little thorns on them as well. So as we walk through, we need to be careful of all these little things because you might get caught in there quite easily. And these, these uh, particular thorns here from the buffalo thorn, they can also tear your skin open. So you just always know the different plants as well that we walk past. You see those very hooked thorns on them? We need to be careful of those because they can very easily give you a nasty cut. Okay, as we continue on and try to get up on some more tracks, let's head you on over to Taylor um, and see how she's getting on. Well, we're having a very funny this afternoon. <laughs> We're having a very funny safari is what I wanted to say to you because the animals are playing a big joke this afternoon and they don't want to be seen. Wait, let's see if we can see squirrels up in this tree. No, there's nothing there. Okay, next tree. We'll keep checking. Oh, there's a hornbill. I'm going to show you one of the coolest birds, Archer. I just need to try and find a way to show you. So I'm going to sneak up to it already, David. It's up here on the right. But it is a little, guys. I'm going to go for a little bit further forward because I think we might get an even better view. There we go. So, Parker, you've asked if we do these safaris every single day. Not just every single day, but twice a day. How cool is that? So, you get a chance to see the different animals that prefer the early mornings. Some prefer the hot afternoons. For instance, we see a lot of birds on the hot afternoons, like that red-billed hornbill that's just flown away. And then, as the afternoon progresses, all the sleepy lions and leopards that have been resting, they all decide to get up. And then we do a little bit of a safari into the night as well. So we get to see the different times of the day. And then at night you can see things like owls, which are really cool, chameleons. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Last night we found both. We found owls and chameleons. Oh, there's another hornbill. Where are you going to land? Up top. So it is sitting in a very, very big tree called a Balanites tree. Now... Mika and Japeth, you've asked if there are a lot of birds here. There are indeed. I mean, so far we've seen three different types of birds. And like this is still the red-billed hornbill, not the same one we saw. It's a different one. But um, there must be over, maybe at this time of the year, about 250 different types of birds. And then when all the migratory birds, so all the birds that come here for our summer, they've all left now, though. They just chase the sun. They don't want to be here for winter. When they come, there must be close to about 300 or so birds in the area. So we're really, really, really lucky. We do get to see lots and lots all the time. And they've, some of them have got really, really beautiful calls. They've got a strange call. They're not the prettiest sounding bird. They sort of go, like a chicken with a sore throat. <laughs> so... They make strange noises, so they're very important to the ecosystem too. Please, can you repeat the name, Kirst, for me? Beckett? Beckett, you've asked why did that bird have such a long beak? Well, I suppose it would have something to do with what type of food it would be eating, but then again, I don't, you don't normally see those birds sticking their beaks into little holes because it's got quite a long beak, so you, you'd think that. And um, so I'm not sure why that one has such a long beak. Whenever I see them feeding, they're normally eating termites on the side of the road. Maybe they've pecked open um, some of the mound that's still nice and soft, or perhaps they're eating scorpions and, and, and little snakes sometimes and centipedes. Um, so yeah, I suppose that maybe it's just got something to do with the type of food that it's eating. So like there's some birds, for instance, like a green wood hoopoe that's got a really long, thin beak, a really, really long one. And, and they'll use it to go into the little holes and they'll pull out like worms and larvae and all sorts of little beetles that are maybe living inside the wood. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, what else have we got? Let's see if there's any footprints in the sand. Oh, actually... How cool is that? There are some footprints in the sand, but whose footprints are they? They look a little bit... Well, it's hard to tell. I'm going to get out the car very quickly to get a closer look because I can't really tell what's going on over here. Sometimes it's easier to, to jump out. So this is what's caught my attention. Is this thing here. What is that? I'm trying 
trying to see from a different angle. If it helps. I don't know what that, that is. It's very disturbed. It doesn't look very fresh. It looks like it's whatever has done this is maybe from yesterday. So what I will do, the cool thing about tracking is that you don't just have to focus on this one. You can look further back. You can look ahead to see if there are any more. Now, if I look over here, there's another kind of a little track that's maybe similar to that. I wonder if this isn't from a big civet or something, maybe last night, that was walking around here. Because it kind of looks like it's a paw print. I don't know if it's a leopard. That one's definitely a civet track over here. But I can see some toes, and I can definitely see the back of a foot. But it's very hard to tell, very, very disturbed. But this is an area where there have been lots and lots of leopards. Like I said, it's not very fresh. There's lots of sand kicked up on it. Let's see if there's anything else that's quite cool here. This road has been driven up and down, up and down. I think Brent and James were driving here this morning trying to find those leopards that are giving us a slip again. We've been actually been trying to find them since yesterday and we haven't been winning. Just been giving us little snippets. Well, we'll see, maybe we find some more clearer tracks. Maybe it is a, a leopard track. In fact, anyways, we'll keep searching for other cool things out in the wilderness. Off you go to bring to see if he's having any luck. Well, no such luck on those leopard tracks. I've heard there's some other leopard tracks uh, that are more fresh from this afternoon uh, to the west of me. So that's where I'm heading and hopefully we'll get some luck in that area. Uh, so unfortunately, I think that leopard's snoozing in somewhere thick. Yes, Keelan, an animal will attack an animal larger than itself. Uh, male leopards have been known to attack kudu. Uh, a female kudu is probably double the weight of a male leopard. So yes, they, they do and quite often attack animals larger than themselves. And female leopards often catch adult impala. And, and a, a female leopard weighs around 45 or so, 100 pounds to so 110 pounds. And a big male impala can weigh uh, 60 kilos, so 140, 150 pounds. So, yes, they do often. Now, like a lot of animals out in the wild, apart from elephants and a giraffe and rhino, leopards don't live that long. A female leopard lives to about 14 uh, or 15 years old in the wild, and a male leopard to about 12 or 13 years old in the wild. Of course, there are exceptions. There are individuals that will live longer than that. And there we go, that's your answer to your question there, Demetrius. So yes, uh, well, they do not, don't live for too long, but uh, some individuals have lived as long as 18 years, but uh, females, but mostly 15, and males 12 to 13 years in the wild. Aha, we have some fun culprits up ahead in the road. Don't fly away now. Now, you might, a lot of you guys might recognize this bird from the Lion King. Oh, apparently you've just seen them, but what we have here, um, there was a female feeding a sub-adult. So that is the adult there that was feeding the little one that's just below it. Not so little, that one there, but you can see that it was feeding that one. So it looks like all three, and where's the third one gone? Mom, dad, and baby. Now, hornbill moms are very good moms, and uh, they'll actually lose all their feathers when they have babies, and they will stay inside the nest, and the male will close out the outside of the nest with mud to make sure no snakes and other creatures can get to the mom and the babies. So very good parents, hornbills. Okay, well, let's leave the hornbills to their business. I'm going to keep looking for leopard. Ah, now, 
see, as I said, everyone seems to be looking for leopard. I wonder who's going to be first to find a leopard. But for now, Rolf is looking at something in the sand. Looking at something in the sand, I am indeed. Now, remember everybody, like I was saying to you, being out on foot is like being inside everybody's bedroom. Well, you can um, see all sorts of interesting things when you're in people's houses and in their bedrooms. Well, look at this. We've got a very interesting track here. And I'd like to ask you to send in your answers. What animal do you think this is to start with? It's moved all along the road here. It's moved all the way through here, and there's a little bit of scuff marks there as well. He's obviously come over this log, and, um, well, I will just wait for you to give some answers, but it's a very clear track that has been left here, and we can tell just by this track exactly what animal this is. Now... Ethan, why do footprints help? I think that was the question. Um, well, you know, footprints help us uh, identify exactly what kind of animal has been there. And that is very interesting because if you make a footprint, we can see if your footprint was a very small one, well, it's a little person, isn't it? If it's a very big one, it's a very big person. Well, out in the bush, we can also see uh, if it's a big animal, if it's a small animal, and exactly what kind of animal. Is it a bird? Is it an antelope? Is it a red? Tile, or is it something uh, completely different? Well, I want to know from you what animal you think this is, and I'm only going to give you a little bit longer. London, you are absolutely right. It is a snake. Now, I want to show you something very interesting about this snake track, because which way was he going? Now, I'm not going to wait for you to answer because I want to show you which way was he was going. There's a very clear imprint there. There's a very clear way how he was going like a snake, isn't it? He's going like this in a serpentine motion, uh, up and down like that, in a real windy motion like that, like snakes do, hey? But which way was he going? Now, think about a snake. As he moves, he needs to push each time so he pushes he pushes he pushes and what happens there it makes a very clear push mark so I'm going to put my binoculars down there and as I can see here if I push like that there's a dune over there as he turns he pushes again there's another dune there and he turns there there's another dune on that side and then very big over here he pushes so you see that dune and then when he comes around, he pushes there again. So, this snake went up in that direction. Okay, so that's the way you tell how snakes move, which direction they move. Now, there's not only just snake tracks here. Liam, well done. You also guessed it right. It's a snake. Now, look at this little track over here. Very different to the snake mark isn't it? It looks just like a line in the sand, but if we look very closely, there's one, two, three toes, and it's stepped again. One, two, three. This is a little dove that's walked through the snake track. I wonder if that snake was around when this dove was walking through here. A dove is a little bird, and he's got three little toes. Over here, we've got a little round mark, and over there, another little round mark. That is a little scrub hair, like a bunny rabbit. So, we haven't seen these animals, but we know that they are here just because they've left such wonderful little tracks for us to know that they are here. It's like you writing in your book at school. We know that you were there because you were writing in your book, isn't it? Okay, so... Speaking of tracks, we're going to try and get some more of those leopard tracks, see if we can find them. And uh, while we do that, let's head you on over to Taylor with a beautiful antelope. We have got a beautiful antelope. There's quite a few of them down here near a little dam, but it's, it's not really a dam anymore. It's just a small amount of water in there. And these are called Inyala, with an N, Inyala sorry and these are the boys and they're very pretty they've got their smartest outfits on this afternoon and you probably think they're quite hot because it is very hot today I don't know how I would cope with all that long hair 
but I suppose they've just acclimatized to this area. Nice big horns. And the girls look completely different to them. But unfortunately, there's no female in Yala here to show you a comparison. Because they are like a light brown color. They are almost the same color as the Impala that you can see just standing at the back. But there's a big male again, a big ram with his long horns. But the, the girl in Yala is about those colors. Now, Madison and Kamaya, I'm glad you've asked this question about whether I've seen animals fighting before. Because at this time of the year, it's rutting season. So the impala, this animal that we're looking at now, it's getting busy and uh, fighting with one another, trying to, well, I suppose, decide who's the biggest and the strongest impala in the sabi sand. So we're seeing them fighting at the moment. And then a moment ago, you may have also seen... There was a little bird sitting on that impala's face, and, and we'll see that on a lot of the different animals. Uh, that was called an oxpecker. I just wanted to quickly tell you about that. So we can see a lot of different animals fighting. I think what could happen with these inyala down below, if any female inyala show up, they might do a beautiful dance. So the inyala are not quite as aggressive as some of the other antelope species. They like to settle their differences by sh showing off. So what they do, as you can see, they've got that mane, that white mane that's sort of just sticking up a little bit. They can make that stand up, and it's quite long and wispy too. So they make all that hair stand up on their, <clears throat> the back of their necks and down their spine, and then they sort of arch their backs a little bit, and they lift their legs up one at a time very, very slowly, and they sort of move like they're going in slow motion. And that normally can determine who the winner is, whoever's got the biggest horns, whoever does the best dance. And if that doesn't work, and they are equal size, then they will clash horns, just like the impala do. But lots of animals do fight. We've seen elephants fighting, we've seen leopards and lions fighting before. Hippos fight a lot too. <clears throat> now, Annika, I suppose it depends on what type of antelope species we've got here that would determine how long the horns are as well as Sean. Sorry, Sean, you're also asking about the horns. And the Nyana's horns, I'm not exactly sure on the length. They're not too long though. They're not big like the kudus. I would say they maybe maybe get to about I don't know, eighty centimeters, between sixty and eighty centimeters. So say double the, just double the length of your ruler. See, there's also a little bit of a bend in them. Now, the reason why they have those horns is, of course, for protection or for fighting, like we just said. With the, with the antelope species, you don't often see the girls fighting. It's the boys that fight over the girls. So they will use those horns um, not only to protect themselves, but also to be able to establish dominance, so to, to establish who is the biggest and the, the baddest of them all. And then lions have got very sharp teeth and big claws that they'll use when they fight. The leopards are the same. And rhinos have got big horns too on the front of their faces. And they've also got very thick skin, so it's like they're wearing armor plating. These antelope are not wearing armor plating. There, you can see the one is sort of making the hair stand up on the back of his neck now. See that? Look how cool it is. And if he does it, I bet all the other Nyala are going to do the same thing. It's one of the most amazing things to watch out here in the bush is to see the Nyalas do that beautiful dance. I haven't actually seen it for a very, very, very long time. And I was hoping that if we hang around here for long enough, we may in fact get to see them do their dance. But that would determine, it. that would mean there'd have to be some girls around here that have to get excited in order to do that beautiful dance. Chasing the flies away and the ox peckers. See those birds will actually help take the ticks off of those animals. Um, Addison, you've asked if I think that these animals get lost. Um, not, not when they're this age, maybe when they're younger, some, they could get separated from uh, the females perhaps. That could happen, but otherwise, no, I think they've got a pretty good sense of direction. Very cool though, aren't you? I get lost sometimes though. Sometimes, not anymore though, but when I first started to I was learning the roads, I had no idea where I was driving. And when I was in Kenya, I also had no idea where I was driving at all. Ooh, hang on. Whose footprints are in the sand? See, they're very busy um, down here. Lots and lots of different footprints. 
Right, let's see if we can find one more thing to show you before I have to say goodbye. <gasps> Look at this. I'm going to find a little gap. There's some wildebeest coming down. We find a gap. There we go. So, just in the distance, on their way down, I think, hoping to come and have a drink of water from what's left in that little drying up pan. They'll have to get past the Impala and the Inyala first. But thank you to Central Elementary and Kempsville Meadows for joining us today. I hope that you learned a little bit about the school drive and I hope that you have a really good day at school today and you don't get too much homework. <laughs> Anyways, remember you can still keep watching us and we hope that you jump on board again soon. But I'm going to send you to a brink now where we will continue the afternoon safari. Oh dear, oh dear, and off disappears the chagra. <laughs> uh, that's the one thing about birding. Sometimes it can be a bit frustrating as they do disappear. So welcome back to our small safari life family with us for most of the days. Standing by. Uh, Zoe's Junction Verted Access. Copy, thanks. Confirm I keep coming straight up for your access. Copy, thanks very much, Jan. Ooh, I wonder where I'm off to. Okay, hang on, guys. I'm just going to try to find these off-road tracks. I wonder what we're off after. Looks like they went off here. Let's just listen to it. Let me just ask them again quickly. Tax is best access from Gallagher shortcut or from Vertila access still? Right, copy. I see the is coming out. I'm a little bit further south. Okay, I'm on my way. Okay, so we're going to jump in there now so we can just see the vehicle coming out in front of us. And apparently it's quite thick in here. There we go. Hold on, we're going in. Oh dear, this is quite thick in here. Okay, I think I'm, I'm going to have to concentrate to get in here. So while I do that, I'm going to send you across to Ralph, and you're just going to have to wait to see what the surprise is. Yes, well, everybody, we're still also trying to find these leopards. But um, while we're walking along, well, I decided I was getting a little bit hungry. So I'm going to have myself a little bit of salad here. And this is a very sweet uh, little leaves coming from the buffalo thorn, the thorns that I was showing you a little bit earlier. But this one is a live one. And very interesting plant this indeed. Because, well, it doesn't only have very tasty little leaves that you can use to put in your salad, but um, lots of folklore around this with the local Zulus and Shangan all using this plant in, in um, the ancestral uh, sort of legends and myths and so on. Now, if you look at these branches, they're very zigzag branches, okay? And what they believe is that these zigzag branches represent uh, the path through somebody's life. And every time you have a decision is where you get a thorn. And you have a straight thorn and a hooked thorn. You see that? And then you have another turn and a straight thorn and a hooked thorn. And another turn and a straight thorn and a hooked thorn. And what they believe is, is that that is your pathway through life. And each time you get a real decision that you need to make, one thorn is pointing into the future and one is pointing into the past. So when you make decisions in your life, you need to reflect on what has happened into the, in the past and you need to think about that decision and how it is going to affect your future. So very interesting with that indeed. Now it goes further to say that when somebody dies in a village 
um, is a person from a particular village, but he dies away from home. What, he, what, the, what the people from that village will do is they will take a branch of the buffalo thorn that this tree is from his home village, and they will take it to the place where he died. And with that branch, he, they will capture his spirit. And then they will return home with the branch, and they will buy two tickets. If they're going on a bus, they will buy two uh, bus tickets. If they are having something to eat, they will eat for two. Okay. If they're having something to drink, they will drink for two, as if the person is with them, because his spirit is encapsulated in this branch. And when they get back to the to the home village, they will do the the, the death ceremony or the uh, passing away ceremony with the branch, and they will bury that in his home village. So very interesting in that sense. It's called a buffalo thorn because the people also believe that buffalo use this as a defense mechanism against lions because if they are getting cornered by lions, they will back up into this um, tree and then they don't have to worry about what's behind them. They only worry about what's in front. So a very nice defense mechanism for buffalo. The latter name is Zizifus mucronata and the Afrikaans term for it is the Blinkblar Wachebiki. And that means the leaves have got a different color on each side, okay? So it's a sort of whitey color and a very dark green color. That's the blank blar, the different colored leaf. And wachabiki means wait a bit, because if I go in there and it's going to hook on me and I am going to stand here now for a while and I'm actually going to need Seb to come and help me get out because I am going to wait a while, all right? <laughs> so now that I'm properly stuck in this uh, tree, uh, you can see why it is called the wait a bit tree uh, because you definitely do need to wait a bit when you're in there. Okay, I think we need to continue and get along with our leopard tracks. Oh, do I have a caterpillar? That's a very interesting one. He looks like a little branch. Oh, we haven't seen one of those before. Very interesting. Okay, he's got a little bit of silk on him. He's obviously mimicking the branch, and I think now he's also putting out a little bit of toxins that I've disturbed him. Yes, it is very green. I hope that doesn't burn a hole in my strap. Well, I think we need to try and put him back on the bush that we got him from. He's obviously going to make a wonderful butterfly. Let's try not to injure him. He's got quite a little bit of silk on him as well. Go on there, buddy. There we are. Safe and sound. Back on your buffalo thorn. Good spot for him to be as well, because with all these thorns around, he'll be quite nicely protected. So Herbie, the master tracker, is listening out for and looking for some tracks there. And let's continue. Let's go and try and find this leopard. And I think Brent is doing the same. Let's head on over to him. Well, we've got you. I'm not sure which leopard it is. It looks like Shadulu, I think. So it looks like Shadulu. I'm not 100% sure. We've been trying to keep up with her. She's going into some very thick stuff. So this is the first actual decent glimpse we've got of her. We're going to try to keep up with her. But it is quite hectic in here. And she's about to go into a little river system. I'm hoping we're going to be able to cross that river system and follow her. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, already a longer or better view uh, of a leopard than the one we got this morning. There we go. That does look like Shadulu. Hey, Wendy! Yay, Shadulu! I agree with you, Wendy. Yay! Wonderful to catch up with little Shadulu. Well, not so little. She's a big female now. The first time I saw her, she was still called Ingrid Dam's young female. She was uh, just independent of her mom. Okay, so let's try it a bit closer. And just a little bit less grass in the way. Yeah, here we go.
Gary, I hope you were right. I'm also in the mood for a hunt this evening, and I'm sure so is Senzo and everyone else out there. And she's quite a busy body as a leopard. Um, she's been ducking and diving and moving quite quickly through the bush. Uh, thankfully for us, she's stopped for a, a second now. Beautiful late afternoon light coming through. Oh, itchy, yeah. Now, it's difficult to say, Justin, whether she'll keep pushing into Tundi's territory, but it is a possibility. She is a lot younger. Uh, Tundi is getting a little bit long in the tooth, so to speak. Well, what happens with leopards is they actually get short in the tooth as they get older rather than long in the tooth. Uh, so it is, it is possible she'll keep pushing, um, but Tundi might push back. You never know. Okay, hang on guys, let's just have a look. Um, how, hi, how steep this is, yeah? Uh, yeah, I can see it's fine sense. Okay, there she is, she's disappearing. Oh, don't go that way. Don't go that way. Straight into the Tamburti thickets. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, we're going to keep trying to keep up with her while we do that. Let's send you back across to Taylor. Hi. Darby, did you not get it? <laughs> Sorry, we went through a little, we went through a dip just behind us. And I don't think Darby was getting the comms. Sorry for that, everybody. Sometimes in these places, like the, sig the radio signals don't work. It has happened to me quite a few times down at uh, Chitwa Chitwa. In fact, where one of us doesn't have communication. Anyways, we're on Bivelsook Boundary. I was trying to track that big elephant that is supposedly Daryl, but we're not really sure. Uh, I had a look at some of the screenshots from uh, his mud bath earlier today. Now, those tusks just pointed up a little bit too much for my liking. So, I don't actually know if it was, was Daryl. There are lots of elephants in the Sabi sand that have got holes in their ears. But, um, I mean... That doesn't mean it, it wasn't him, but those tracks do cross out. They go all the way along Mvubu Road, and then after Mvubu Road, they cross into Bivelsuk, the next town. We were just not quick enough today, I'm afraid, but we're going to head towards, uh, I think, Bivelsuk Dam and see if our hippos are there. We better count the goslings very quickly, see if all the Egyptian geese goslings are still there. We've lost one already. We're down to seven. Now, obviously, we've been trying to find all these mystery leopards that have been moving around, and somebody that seems to have moved right out the area, Katkus, is uh, Tumba. The last time I heard about Tumba, it was a May, not quite a week ago, just shy of a week ago, and it sounded like he was on Elephant Plains. It sounds actually sounds like he's taken up residence at the moment on Elephant Plains, and he seems to be doing all right. So. Uh, you can have a look at their Facebook page and see, you can see some images from all the ranges there. So yeah, otherwise, alternatively, Tumba has got a, his own Facebook page and they post any shots that are well seen of him. So you can still see him grow, even though we don't maybe get to see him. There's still an opportunity to be able to watch him. I would like to see him again. I didn't think that he was going to disappear so soon, but he is being a normal leopard. Mosana is just being abnormal and sticking around, lingering around, but I suppose his situation is a little bit unusual, hey, with everything that of course happened, the, the mystery. Now, if you don't know who Tumba is, well, if you've already started searching him, you probably would have found out, but Tumba is in fact uh, an offspring of Tandi. And obviously we know Tandy's got her new offspring, Kalamba, and well, that's what we've been trying to find for the last little while. So Tumba's moved on, but at least we've still got Kuchava in the area, who is also an older daughter of Tandy, and she's got a little one of her own. But we haven't seen, uh, oh wow, we haven't actually seen Kuchava for a while. Now, the reason why I'm oh wowing is because, well, Brent has lived up to his reputation of being the Leopard Whisperer. We are with her. 
she's just spotted a small breeding herd of Inyala. There's some young ones in, the, in it as well. They're probably 20 meters away from her. And you can see how her behavior has changed. She's quite focused. And uh, I mean, it's interesting to see which way she's going to go from here. Now, I've just lost sight of... No, I can just make out the Nyala directly in front of me. Just trying to see if the Nyala sense anything. I don't think they do yet. Now, I'm not sure with it. You see, there's the Nyala there, Sensor. See it right in front of me. There you can just see them moving. There we go, she's on the move. See, quite often you don't realize how short a leopard is, they often lose sight of of the prey while they're stalking okay i'm just trying to see where she's gone we've got no oh there we go sends has found her again see i think she's almost going the wrong way now see to me it looks like she's trying to She's trying to catch sight of them again. Okay. Oh, I've lost sight of the Nyala. I'm hoping she should pop out on the other side of this bush if she doesn't head for that termite mound. There she is, you see her sense? Okay. Um, there. Right there. There we go. You got it? There we go. You can just see how that camouflage makes her absolutely melt. She's so difficult to keep an eye on when she gets into that sort of broken country. Yeah, I think we need to move. And we, then Yala have moved off, and uh, we don't want to disturb. So what I want to do is head up and around. What, Sense? Did you see something? Uh, sorry, I thought Sensor was calling me there. I'm just trying to see one last squiz of her. No, I think in these situations, especially when she gets down into those thickets like that, it's better to try get. Uh, the prey in sight and then you sit by and you stand by there and you wait Karen says can she do please catch up uh, catch some prey I'm hoping so Karen I am hoping so okay let's just try and find a way where we're gonna move around at a bit of a distance so as not to disturb not giving either Shadulu or the Inyala an advantage. Ooh, and it sounds like Rolf's got another spotted cat. Well, everybody, this is now absolutely wonderful. We've been tracking up on this beautiful cat for a little while now, and we've managed to find him with the help of our expert tracker, Hobie. He picked up the fresh tracks, and then between us, we've been able to get him now, and he's just gone down. It, look like, it looks like Rosanna. everybody and welcome aboard with the afternoon bushwalk. We've, uh, we've been able to follow up and track uh, 
Hosanna, the very famous leopard that we have here on Juma in the greater Kruger National Park in the Sabi Sands. We got his tracks a little bit earlier and, uh, well, we've managed to find him. Uh, he, he did run away from us a little bit, but now he's, he's relaxed and we're now very close to him on foot. What a wonderful experience this is. He's lying nice and flat. It seems he's relaxed quite nicely now. And we're about about 25 meters away from him, so not very far, but we do have the little drainage line in between us, so he also can feel safe. But look at that beautiful camouflage that he has. If we didn't know what his tracks are like and, and, and our expert eyes to be able to spot him here in the bush, you could walk straight past him. What a beautiful cat that is. Now, Nandini, you're asking a very relevant question there. Um, we generally let the animals tell us how far away we should be from them. And you can see his very relaxed nature. Now, obviously, when we do move around a little bit, he's quite um, it's sort of reactive towards that. But if he showed any sign of, uh, of agitation or nervousness, we would back away. He would let us know. So he's the one that we need to watch in terms of how close we're going to get to him but you see how relaxed he is well he's relaxed with us being in this particular position and i'm happy that we've got some dead ground in front of us he's got cover and so do we so it's absolutely perfect and uh, well look at his behavior he's relaxed and so we should be too but we just need to watch him if his body language changes in any way if he starts to snarl or he puts his ears back or he starts to wave his tail backwards and forwards or up and down that's when we'd start to get nervous as well but this cat uh, Hosanna um, is, is very relaxed around people and around vehicles quite habituated but we still need to keep our distance and we need to be careful especially on foot that's why we've got this uh, dead area in between us and that cover perfect And while getting in here, we listen to all the little noises of the animals. Little birds giving away his presence, especially the, the Franklin and the Spurfowl. And one or two little squirrel calls. And he is looking over at us. He is aware that we are here, but he's quite relaxed. A little bit of ear flicking, that's more so to do with the flies and so on. So he's starting to move off. I'm just going to tell Herbie that he's going around that side just so that he knows and Herbie doesn't get surprised with him coming around there too. Now with the leopard moving off like that, when we're on foot we're not going to chase up behind him too much, that could irritate him and with us being on foot it, um, we're putting both us and the animal in danger. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to let the vehicles know and then they can come in and view him nice and closely um, and that's the best way to do things from this particular point. You never follow up on predators, elephants or any, any other animals like that. It's especially if they start walking away, you don't chase up behind them. So that was fantastic, everybody. Uh, my heart is racing because it was so amazing. Um, and that's it. Let's head you on over to Brent, who's uh, got a leopard on the hunt. Now, can you believe there is a leopard, an adult female leopard, right in the middle of your screen? Uh, you can just make out her rosette. She's busy stalking a little group of Inyala. Now, just wait, and you can just see her moving. You see how slowly and stealthily she's moving through the thicket. Isn't this incredible? Now, remember, this is a hundred percent live coming to you from the Sabi Sands Game Reserve in South Africa. We've already had two, two leopards this afternoon. And this little female or young female, Shadulu, is busy stalking in Yala. Now I can't see the antelope anymore but I know they must be close judging from her behavior. Now you can see I've lost, she's still there. There, 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 there. 
uh, Nandini no. And Nyalas are not too fast for the leopard. Uh, if the leopard can get close enough. She's moving so sneakily through there. <laughs> Miss Muffin says it's raining leopards. Miss Muffin, I wish I could sit and watch leopards all day, every day. You still see her? I think I've, she's either gone rock still. Have you got her? No, I think she's moved. Thank you, she's moved. Now you can see how effective that camouflage is. She just completely disappears. Now we haven't heard the bark of the Inyala yet, which means that they've spotted her. I'm just going to move forward a tiny bit to see if we can see dishes, dishes. Um, where's that little, I just saw her in, in that little gap there, but she moved forward a little bit, so I'm just going to roll forward and see if we can spot what she's stalking. see them. There we go. Senzo has spotted. Oh, they've spotted her. There's an Anyala right here. That's the one she went for. But she wasn't close enough. Now listen to the bark. Now they're telling all the other Anyala, careful, leopard, watch out, there's a leopard. And once the leopard's been spotted, the Anyala are fleet enough afoot to be able to avoid her. She should start moving out into the open, and hopefully she will hunt again soon. But in the meantime, thank you for joining us for your very own slice of live action from the middle of the African bush. From myself, Brent, and Senzo, bye. Wow, that was exciting. She got really close. We still can't see her, but we can see that Anyala. I said, taxi, can you see her? The last place I saw her was just in front of Fanuti there. I said, no one can see her yet. And Okay, well, we're going to try to see if we can get a visual of Shadulu. While we do that, let's send you back to Rolf, who's still with the little chief. Wow, everyone, yes, we are still with the little chief. He's just moved off a little bit into the grass, and he's just hiding himself a little bit. So we've given ourselves a little bit of space, and uh, we're just having a last quick view on him. I'm sure you can see him nice and clearly there. And uh, he's still quite relaxed. But there's some vehicles that are going to come in now and that are going to view him nice and closely because he is a little bit more relaxed around vehicles. When people on foot, it's a little bit more difficult because he'll react quicker to us and um, 
and we obviously don't want to put his life in danger or ours. So as much as he is relaxed around us, we need to be very careful. Because, uh, you know, his mood might change from minute to minute. And, and the little chief is, is a wonderful cat, but um, we just need to respect his space as well. That's of utmost importance. So, yes, Herbie, the master tracker. Well done, Herbie. I'm so stoked that we managed to find him. And it's a team effort, eh? Both of us have, have done it, but uh, without Herbie, I don't think we would have found him. He knows these cats so well. He knows their habits, and he knows where they move and groove. And uh, I'm still learning the particular habits of these cats. I know leopard in general. Now, it's probably quite difficult for you to see him in the grass there so I think we're going to let the vehicles come in get a better view for us maybe t maybe Taylor will come in he's gone nice and flat there so we'll let her know where he is and maybe she'll come in and have a better view speaking of Taylor let's head on over to her and see how she's going Well, I'm very excited to hear about Hosanna and I'd love to come and view him, except my game drive radio is not working. So I, I can't talk to Herbie on the radio. So, Ralph, if you can please tell Kirsty, who's directing, where I need to go. And then I'll quite happily go there. Oh, okay, there we go. There, you're in the Milwaukee. Well, you know what we can do is we can perhaps start at the most southern point of the Milwaukee which is just off Gowrie, Maine, and then go all the way up, and then I suppose we will have to find them somewhere. Or, what do we do? No, I think we should do that, because Hosanna could be quite fun. He doesn't sit down for too long. Just north of Mumba Road. Okay, then we need to go down here, and we're going to reverse. We've just literally just passed Mumba Road, in fact. So we will turn down Mumba Road. Like this. Zoop. Um, Kirstie, it's not a problem. If they're in the Mulwati, that's fine. My phone is not working, so the pin is not really going to work. Uh, there's only, well, there's not many places they can go. And if they're just north of Mumba, that's perfect. So we're on Mumba now, so this will take us all the way down. It's quite, it's actually a really long road, in fact. A couple of hundred, no, maybe, maybe a kilometer and a half, maybe just over a mile or so. And then it dips down into the Mulwati, and then it's only a very small section of a, a few meters before it turns into twin dams so i reckon that we should be able to find hosana but we'll, we will get there eventually so i'm quite excited seeing as though we were chasing ghosts yesterday trying to find leopards it was it was quite hilarious um how the animals were behaving around us just sort of giving us little snippets of them well not even us not even giving myself and ralph snippets giving everybody else around us a chance to have a look at them and I think they must feel a little bit sorry for themselves today that they treated us like that. And now, well, they're just showing off. So that's fine. Like I said, you've always got to take nature with a pinch of salt and have a sense of humor about it. Let's see whose footprints these are. Lots of little squirrel tracks and things like that in the road. Now we go. I suppose we better keep our eyes out because Tandy hasn't been located so she could be around and this is another favorite spot of hers she does uh, quite enjoy mumba road too and i think brent a couple of mornings ago yesterday morning in fact had Klalamba's tracks in a mud wallow a dried or well, a drying up mud wallow if you will so we know that they do spend a bit of time down here and I think the first time that I actually saw, or briefly saw Klalamba was just off a road, not far from here, just off to the right. But uh, she wasn't cooperating that day. She was playing in the long grass and I couldn't quite see, uh, see her. That was that day, it was really an amazing sighting, in fact. We'd found Hosanna, remember he was up in the tree with a Dacre kill and hissing down at some, uh, below him and we couldn't work out what it was. And then Tandy appeared from the drainage line in the long grass. That was a great welcome back to uh, the Sabi Sand. I've definitely been spoiled. You know what I did start doing? is I actually started writing in one of my notebooks, but I've lost all my pens now, on all the different leopard and lion sightings, basically all the big cat sightings and then also wild dog sightings I'd had. And I'd filled up two pages fairly quickly. So it, we really, really are spoiled in the Sabi sand with all the wonderful animals that we get to see on a regular basis. I was impressed with the wild dogs. I don't think I've seen so many wild dogs in such a short space of time before. In, in like sort of regular intervals which is nice 
to see. But we've still got a little bit of a way to go before we get down to the Mulwati. Hmm. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. There's a little grasshopper that has landed on the hood of the car, but I think it's just out of view, unfortunately. I don't think you can't see it. No, no. It's just, I just wonder if I can chase it, not chase it, but just encourage it is probably a better word. Let's see. Well, it's on the tire. Just leap over there. No, that's a fly. I don't know. You know what? It's a cheeky grasshopper. It's just again, just sitting out of view. Oh, hello. It's jumping. There we go. There it is. What's walking here? What's this? Hang on. Sorry, that was a very pretty grasshopper, which is why I want to show you. But something has just slunk away. Did you hear the grass moving there? And I saw something disappearing into the grass. I don't know if it was a daycare. Let you know. Let's just take a gamble. Let's drive in here. Something is definitely moving here. It's probably going to be a standwalk or a daycare, but you know what? You never know. Let's just have a little gander here. And you see it? Oh, well spotted. It's a little steenwalk. Don't worry, it has got two ears. But sometimes they put one ear behind them like that. And then it makes it difficult to see what's irritating you. That was really quite cool. I think it was trying to sneak away from us. And the way that it was slinking through the grass made me actually think that it was a leopard or something. Shame, it must have got something in its ear. Maybe some grass seeds. That's a possibility. I know that one of my dogs... Um, Peppa, my Jack Russell, I used to have. She used to get grass seeds in her ears all the time. Now, Lauren, yes, if animals do get sick, they're obviously weakened. They probably want to stay sort of out of sight. Uh, it I also suppose it depends if they're a, a herd animal. So I've seen quite a few impala that, you know, just look under the weather thin, um, maybe a bit of a, a, not even necessarily a limp, but you see them with swollen ears. They just they, they just don't look well. Then they're going to keep up with the herd because they know if they single themselves out and they start lagging behind, they're obviously um, going to be, well, dinner for something. I've actually just seen the bushwalk team appearing up ahead of us. Um, anyways, but we're going to go and pass him and find out exactly where Hosanna is. And while we do that, let's go back to the other leopard on the property. Well, there she is. She's just moving down the road now after taking us on some pretty hectic off-roading. But she's out in the, on the road, so we're going to try to keep up with her now. Uh, yes, Wendy, apparently Shududu has been seen mating with Hokumuri in the west. And... I'll just try and make sure. Uh, oh, no, that's not going to work. You got her there, Sens. Okay, we're just going to wait for the other vehicles to move out of the way a little bit. We'll just let them go past us. Hi Bobby. Um, Bobby, in certain circumstances leopards have been known to learn how to use vehicles to hunt, uh, but not, not really. If that does happen, it's generally naughty people who've taught them that habit. Um, when they get close to an animal or something, they'll try to start the car and make sure that sort of the leopard has the best chance out here. We try and make sure that doesn't happen and that it has equal chance for prey and predator. And she's going, disappearing around the corner near the old Galago shortcut hyena den at the moment. Thanks, Orbs. Thanks, guys. Are we going to just shoot up ahead here quickly? Hold on, everyone. I'm going to try and get into a spot where we can. Oh, there we go. She's decided to flop down in the road.
Now, there we go. She's decided to flop down straight in the road, giving all of us a nice chance to see her. Uh, Ali, normally we can figure out which leopards which quite quickly. And, uh, I mean, we spend a lot of time with these animals, so any new leopard in the area, it doesn't take us too long to figure out who is who. As I said, Shadulu used to be known as the Ingrid Dam young female. So her mom is the Ingrid Dam female, who is from to the west of here, quite far west actually. So Ingrid's Dam is an area we actually, well, I suppose Tristan, Scott and I all know very well. Uh, it is on Singita, where we all used to work. Oh, she is a gorgeous leopard. Uh, giving herself a good preen after that failed Inyala hunt. Tom, indeed, these are the best type of roadblocks, but she's up and on the move again. She is heading towards uh, the north. Uh, we will stick with her as long as possible. Hopefully she has a little bit more success on her next attempt at hunting. Okay, well, we're going to follow her shortly while we do that. Let's send you back to Rolf, who's still on foot. Yes, everyone, we are still on foot. And, well, we've left Osana now, and um, Taylor's moving into that area. But what we're doing now is we're actually in the block where Tandi um, has left her cub. So she's, it looks like the tracks have led back to where... Um, the cub is so we're hoping we obviously don't want to get the cub on its own um that's not the idea the idea is is that um it looks like tandy's tracks have led back towards where the cub was last seen so that's what we're doing at this very moment um but uh we're obviously just trying our luck now we've found osana so we thought we're in the area let's go and have a look and see if we can find tandy and cub Just try and keep Seb out of the, the thick luck. Now, Paul, uh, nice question. That the, the smell of the bush at the moment is actually giving quite a lot of people um, hay fever because you see this grass, all of it is in flower, it's all in seed, so there's a lot of pollen at the moment and it's quite irritating on a lot of people's noses. I don't really get um, sinus like that. So it's not a problem for me. So a lot of people are struggling to actually breathe at the moment. But for me, it's a wonderful time because there's all sorts of fresh smells as we walk through all these uh, grasses giving off this lovely fresh smell and there's hardly a breath of wind at the moment as well and it's cooling off quite nicely I have been sweating profusely uh, up until this point it's been rather hot uh, at around that 30 degrees Celsius but now it's starting to get very comfortable very nice and as we start heading into autumn well these are going to be starting to be lovely evenings lovely mornings actually quite chilly and uh, we lose that sort of real humidity of the low felt summers we do need to be a little bit quiet because we're heading into the area where Tandi and Cub were last seen okay while we try and catch up and see if we can find the Nkonzo, as we say in Shangan, the tracks in English of Tandi and Cub. Let's head you on over to Taylor, who's now with Hosanna. We are, we are. Well done to the Bushwalk team. Fabulous work. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll have another leopard this evening. Wouldn't that be quite cool? But here we sit with young Hosanna, who you just saw moments ago. Uh, the last offspring of Karula, our beloved queen, who sadly is not with us anymore. But here he sits, fast asleep. He's a bit of a chubby bunny at the moment, with all those wrinkles in his neck. <laughs> He's still got to, of course, grow into his skin. 
he has definitely got a lot of growing to do and isn't it amazing that we get to follow his life day in and day out not every single day though because he's quite sneaky and uh, disappears for a little while but I'm glad to see him back on Juma which is awesome now I was uh, just chatting to Johanna and Johanna had actually said that um, Hosanna mentioned to him that he's possibly going to make a kill in an hour so we'll see how much of a leopard whisperer Johan is this evening <laughs> and uh, if he's going to make a kill. Johan is just sitting with his with his family and friends just on the opposite side of the tree. You won't be able to see him. But there we go, a gorgeous glow just in the background. I think we're going to be in for a spectacular sunset this evening. And will be another... Now... We were actually talking about this the other day. Tristan and I, in fact, were talking about this, Clifford. And we think that we see more leopards up here in the north. I was looking, because it's not, it's not the first time that I've written down leopard sightings. I think I've had more regular sightings up here. And I'm not just talking about on our traverse. Uh, I'm also talking about the leopards that the other, uh, all the other lodges are seeing in the north. And there's at least a leopard or two or three sighted every single safari. So down in the south, I've had some amazing sightings, and I've seen lots and lots of leopards. Obviously, there's large concentrations along uh, the Sabi and the Sand River. But um, I don't know. I just feel like the, the sightings up here are, are, are really cool. I've had some, I think I've actually had some of the best sightings up here rather than down in the south. I find that the lion population is better down in the south and the reason why i think that is obviously with all the big river systems comes really good grazing there's a big yawn which brings about a lot of the buffalo the lions of course the main source of food out here in the sabi sand for and in the kruger for lions is in fact buffalo so they're going after them most of the time so i think that the leopards sort of fill a couple of spots if you will uh, there's another pun uh, I'll try. Can you? There's a bird that's calling at the moment. I just want to sit quietly so you can hear it. Can you hear it going? I don't know if you can hear it. It might be a little bit soft, but it's a really cool bird we don't get to see all the time. It's a southern bobo. One of the birds that are able to not only mimic other bird calls, but they've got quite a, a large vocabulary of their own. And, well, speaking of birds, you can see Hosano has pricked his ears up. I think a little Franklin or something flew up ahead. I wasn't actually uh, looking in his direction. It sounds as suiting now, because there's a Franklin that's calling in the distance. So perhaps that's what caught his attention. But this is good news for us, the fact that he has yawned once, and that he's now starting to groom his paws means that he could potentially get up and get on the move and I do hope that he decides to either a walk in the Mulwati where it's going to be easy for us to follow him I don't want him to go and this is of course is just my personal preference because I know how thick the bush is south and to the east of us it will be a nightmare to try and navigate through but if he does go north and or if he walks up in the Mulwati or even if he goes west he'll move into sort of a, a fairly open spot so, seen as though we're quite, not, well, we're not quite close, but we're not far away from Treehouse Dam. And I know that Conrad, one of our technical geniuses, spotted a leopard at Treehouse Dam during the middle of their day on their way to do some repair work on the mast at Chitwa. Uh, he had said he saw a big male leopard. So I think that this is the big male leopard that we had in fact seen. Hello, beautiful boy. It would be nice. Nice to see him when he gets up, too. Now, this is a nice area. It's not too thick just yet, either. It's starting to get fairly open. Now, you might hear a couple of other voices every now and then. Of course, we aren't the only ones in the safari. I think you did see um, with Rolf when they first found Hosanna on foot. Ah, okay. So it seems like you're not able to hear everybody else talking. I just thought I'd mention it anyway in case you thought, what on earth? Who is on Taylor's car? You'd think that I'd have lots of children on my car, though. Oh, there we go. Heather, you said that you did manage to hear that bird call and that you loved it. Well, fantastic. That's really, really good news. It's um, a bird that we don't get to put on screen very often. 
but a lovely bird nonetheless. Right, so I think what we're going to be doing this afternoon is just bouncing from spotted cat to spotted cat. So back you go to Brent, who's still got Shadulu. Well, she's flopped down in the road again for another little grooming session after walking down the road. Sorry, Sam, there we go. We are getting closer to the northern boundary. And traditionally, as you know, this is very much Tundi territory. Wendy, it's very difficult to tell whether she's pregnant. Uh, you only really can tell with leopards when they're quite far along. But uh, she was mating with Hokumuri not too long ago, so the likelihood of her being pregnant for sure now is is oh, a bit difficult to call. Probably not, if she is very recently so. Uh, Bobby, not uh, animals don't really suffer from morning sickness like humans. That would very much impede their ability to hunt and and, and survive. So no, Bobby, uh, don't really have morning sickness like humans. I'm sure females do feel some discomfort when they're pregnant, but I uh, don't think they uh, get morning sickness like humans or cravings. <laughs> meat is meat, and a cat must eat. Oh, she is beautiful. Now, what she's probably doing is trying to get a lot of that sticky pollen off her. So at the moment, uh, most of the grass uh, is absolutely covered in pollen. And it's high in starch and sugar, so it's very, very sticky. So you can see the leopards will spend quite a bit of time grooming after walking through long grass at this time of the year. Oh, she's beautiful. She's giving us a good show today. I suppose well deserved after the thickets she took us through. It's incredible how flexible these cats are. And you see it when they're grooming, but when you actually see them jumping and running up trees is when you realize how supple their spine is. So Elizabeth, she definitely would be scent marking if she was pregnant. Um, she needs to make sure that no other female is going to be a possible risk to her cubs. So yes, she would still be scent marking if she was pregnant. Now, leopards will scent mark even when they have cubs. It is just more unusual for them to go on long extended scent marking trips. Now as the cubs get older they will do that but uh, when the cubs are young they don't tend to do it as often. Now we're gonna wait to see where Shadulu goes off to next. In the meantime let's go see what her son is up to. Well, we're playing a game of reverse as Hosanna walks because he's now on the move. So I'm just going to let him move past. I'm just watching him. I'll look at y'all in a minute. Just going to turn here. There he goes. Good boy. Wait, let me go all the way back. 
And he's going on the Mulwati. Now, Hosanna, of course, we saw him grooming his paws and he's doing nice yawns for us. And he seems to look after himself fairly well. I'm sure you all agree with that. Now, did you say, you did say straw head. Um, there are, of course, at times when leopards won't keep themselves well in mint condition. We saw that with Tingana when he was feeling a little bit under the weather. Uh, so you can imagine. As he's trying to strengthen up again with eating, well, for trying to find a decent meal to eat, uh, he let his coat sort of, well, he basically was neglecting it slightly. But Hosanna seems to be well-groomed all the time. Even when he's walking in uh, the wet grass, he'll stop frequently and, and groom himself. Although Tingana is starting to look a lot better now, so he must be feeling... A little bit better. I am going to talk to people on the radio, but I can't hear what they're saying. The stations, I'm having an issue with my game drive radio. I don't have any volume, but just an update. Hosanna is now mobile north in the Mulwati from his last position. I think Johan will be rejoining the sighting. There's just uh, one unlock for the moment, but there's another space for another vehicle. There we go. Just quickly updating everybody. off he goes and that beautiful especially watching him move that very very white sand it'll be quite nice to see what he does what he gets up to he looks like he needs a decent meal so perhaps he'll be keeping an ear out for any nyala or bushbuck Sammy Jane yes I have seen a, a sick leopard before I suppose um, there was this leopard named Warthog Wallow and oh six toed not a sorry I didn't hear that very well um, no I've never seen a six toed leopard before I can't say um, uh, Sammy Jane whenever we look at their paw prints on the ground they've of course got four toes however lions and leopards do have a dew claw too but unfortunately that is not visible in the track let me catch up to him a little bit because he's got quite far away as you can see so yeah, no, I can't say that I've ever seen a, a six-toed leopard before. That would be quite interesting, though. And I think Hukumuri's got the most interesting tracks I've seen with a leopard, uh, with his sort of back long, long back toes that seem to drag a little bit in the sand. They make for very interesting tracks. I'm just going to shoot up a little bit ahead. We will stop again and watch him. That's what the beautiful thing about the Mulwati is, is that it is fairly open. We are going to get to some points where we sort of meander around. We're going to get to a section where there are going to be lots of gremlins too. But we will deal with that once we get there. Maybe he's actually going to turn off to the left now, um, which will lead us up to Spaghetti Junction. Let me give that update. He's just coming up to Spaghetti Junction now. I'm not quite sure if he's going to go towards um, Battelier Road or if he's... Oh, here we go, Johan, you'll get him. He's visual now. Right, so just like a house cat. You see then, it seems as though he's dug himself a little hole in the ground. And uh, I don't know what he did there. If he just urinated, or perhaps he dropped off something a little bit larger. Well, he didn't t seem to scrape it closed, which is normally what the house cats will do. Come on, boy, why don't you go up towards Chele Pan and have a nice drink of water for us? Yeah, I'm just going to carry on. Very cool, though, hey? What an awesome afternoon. Off we go. Leaving beautiful pulpits in the ground. I'm going to drive over them so nobody gets confused tomorrow morning. Right, we're going to try and navigate around and hopefully Hosanna will do what we've asked him to do. But off you go, uh, back to Ralph, who's not too far away. Wow, everyone, look at that beautiful sunset starting to and make its glow through the trees there. Wonderful. And, um, well, we've left uh, Taylor with that uh, beautiful little chief of ours, and uh, we, we were getting very close, uh, we thought, in on Tandi um, and Cub. But unfortunately, we bumped um, that uh, buffalo bull that we had yesterday at the start of the drive before we had all the gremlins attack. Um, and, well, he was very nervous. He's quite a... He's, he's a young bull to be alone like that um, and uh, on foot 
Well, we didn't want to stay anywhere near him because if anybody, you both, if any of you know the kind of nature of buffalo, um, in the breeding herds and so on, they generally do run away from you and it's not really a problem. But those bulls on their own, they can be very tricky on foot. And, uh, you know, once a uh, buffalo decides to attack, it's um, very difficult to stop them. So we just hot-footed it out of the area. Um, and so we're not going to stay there looking for Tundi and Cub because that buffalo bull is there. So we've now heard some intel, news from the underground, that there is um, some impala alarm calling on quarantine. So we're going to start making our way over there and see why they're making that noises that they are. Um, so that's why we're walking back on the road. We were really enjoying it in the thick stuff, uh, but that buffalo bull, uh, he went and spoiled the party. So that's why we're back on the road. Um, oh, look at this. This is... And just a lot of uh, hippo dung that uh, this is a territorial mark um, and I just wanted to show you that that uh, is very indicative of hippos they also like walking along the road now we're gonna hot foot it over to quarantine let's head on over to Brent with Shudulu well, she's still having a little rest in the road at the moment and uh, it has been quite warm this afternoon. She's covered a fair bit of distance since she was found. So she deserves a little rest. Probably just waiting for that edge to drop off the afternoon before moving on. Clever, if Hosanna met Shadulu, that would be quite an interesting interaction. Um, I think Hosanna's still a little bit little. Shadulu might give him a good hiding, or at least chase him. It all depends. It's, it, it can go either way. It would be fascinating to see. Well, it looks like she's heard something. Nothing too serious, not taking too much notice of it. Her eyes are still a little bit droopy. And you can see she's got a 5-5 five, five spot pattern. So for those of you not sure what a spot pattern is, the spot pattern is the best way to identify individual leopards, and it is the last line of spots above. Sorry, the first line of spots above the last line of whiskers. And she's got five right, five left. So she's a five, five. Oh, tired kitty. Now, um, Bobby, I haven't ever seen a leopard with birth defects. Most of those critters die within the first couple of weeks of being born. It's very seldom that a, an, a wild animal with any major birth defect will, will last into adulthood. So I have never seen one with birth defects. Looks like she might be getting ready to move. Now, I'd say the temperature has dropped two or three degrees in the last couple of minutes. And it should continue to do so as the sun gets further and further below the western horizon. Now, as a lot of you will know, patience is most 
important thing when it comes to seeing incredible sightings with leopards. The other thing you need is perseverance. Let's go find out how Taylor McCurdy's doing. We trying to persevere. I don't know where Hosanna's gone. I'm, I've been trying to sit quietly and listen if we can hear him. I'm just going to go forward towards the edge of the drainage now. Um, so he slunk away. He's obviously hugging the drainage for a reason. He wants to eat something. He wants to find something that he could potentially catch and eat. Did you go in here, young man? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, I quite like that uh, a question about um, me thinking if Hosanna takes us on trips for, our, for his entertainment. Yes, I think he's the kind of cat that would have a sense of humour. So I was just <laughs> checking here. And I think that's probably why he's done this. He's gone, let's just test Taylor's off-roading skills this afternoon. Ow. I'm just going to go back. I'm going to go... Right. I'm going to go back to sort of where we were because I don't know if he's, I don't actually know where he's gone now. He, we could have lost him quite easily. I ducked through the little drainage. Well, obviously, we're quite lucky with these nimble cars. Um, Johan's got a much longer vehicle, so he's not able to do the off-roading, or the efficient off-roading that we can do in these cars. So I thought I'd jump ahead and then he was going to try and keep view. I also don't have radio comms, so I don't know if he said that he can see him again. I'll have to go caca, caca, and then maybe he'll go hur, hur, and respond, and then I'll know that we've seen one another, that we saw him slinking this way. Let's move the Tamboti tree. I'm gonna go down through this little dip again. I'm just going very slowly to see if I can see him. He's a sneaky fella, this. But why would you? Why would you want to drive them? Or if you were a, an animal that could slink through and take like the secret paths, that's what I'd be doing. And we're going to keep digging around here and see if we can find him. I'm sure he's somewhere. Anyways, off we go back to Brain who's actually got a view of his leopard. Well, hopefully Taylor has some luck trying to relocate Asana. And uh, he does do that from time to time, give us the slip, as do all leopards. Now, a lot of you might think that the leopards do it on purpose or whatnot, and they want to get away from us. I, I think not. At, it's not. that's not at all the case. What happens is they just go into an area where we're unable to follow. If a leopard really wanted to give us a slip, they could do so in a matter of seconds. So I think it's just happens to be uh, that they decide to go into an area that isn't suitable for us to follow. I don't think it's on purpose to try to get rid of the vehicles at all. Well, most of the time. Every now and then you sort of have to wonder. But with the sign hat, almost certainly not. And you can see just the way Shadulu was moving. She was hunting. Ah, a very interesting question from Katie about what constitutes hunting success now, or what constitutes a hunt. Now, I would definitely say what we saw today with her was a hunt. She spent a fair amount of time trying to get close to those Inyala, uh, expending time and energy, and uh, unfortunately for her, she was spotted. But I would say that definitely would have constituted a hunt, a failed hunt. I suppose it all depends on what you, what the individual who's who's viewing it, or the researcher, etc., what constitutes a hunt or not. But I would say what we saw today definitely constitutes a hunt. And remember, if they had incredibly high success rates, there'd probably be no other animals left because they'd eat them all.
Now, I've spent a lot of time following lots of different animals, lions, leopards, hyenas, wild dogs, all throughout Africa. And, Brenda, I don't think the vehicles inhibit the, the animals hunting if you drive carefully and respectfully. Now, if you drive badly and you chase animals with your car, of course it will inhibit hunting because they will run away from you or get aggressive with you. But as you've noticed here today, and she has chosen to lie right in the middle of the main road with three cars here and uh, has absolutely not a care. Even though she's not hunting, um, we're not affecting her behavior. And she has grown up with vehicles and uh, realizes that they don't cause a... Uh, Oh, they're not not a threat to her, um, and or a, hin or a hindrance. Ah, and remember, I was saying that perseverance is important when following big cats. Well done, Taylor McCurdy is caught up with her signer. We have, we have. Sorry, I'm just navigating through this little thicket here. We did have a nice view of him, but he's on the move. He's moving quickly. So I'm just going to jump over here. And we'll stop. And we'll watch him move. Off he goes. And then we'll take the next gap. Just dropping my head. There you go. Tail up in the air. Are you going to scent Mark against the tree? No, not yet. He's looking lean. I think it's the leanest we've seen him for a while. But don't worry. You never know when he might get his next meal. But let's jump up ahead again before he disappears once more. We don't want that to happen, that's for sure. I don't know why I sometimes sound like Dr. Zeus when I rhyme, hey? When I say things like that, it's a little bit silly. There's a bird, very unhappy birds. Please drink from this pan, Hosanna. There we go. Yes, now this is what we wanted. I'm just calling Johan quickly because I know he would appreciate a photographic moment like the, like what we've got here. Hasana lapping up some delicious, refreshing cold water. You can just hear he's just navigating, trying to get into a very good spot. I'm envious of him right now. So, Kristen, please may I have that question again? I know I remember it, but I've forgotten it at the same time. Oh, there we go. Now, Dave, they've got an incredible sense of he uh, hearing. Um, it also depends on things like wind direction um, that will aid something like hearing sounds quite far off. And, um, I mean, sometimes we sit in hundreds of meters away. We don't even know that a vehicle has a is, is arriving the site, and we've called them in. You know that they might be three or four roads away, and you often see the cats prick their heads up already listening. And then just a few moments later, uh, or a couple of minutes later, and a vehicle will arrive and sometimes you'll see them also pricking their ears up and then you're sitting dead quiet and you don't say a word because you want to hear what they're hearing and you have no idea you can't hear a sound you can just hear birds tweeting they may hear an impala snorting in the far distance they could hear something like another leopard soaring a little way away um, but exactly how far a leopard can hear away I'm not exactly sure but it would be definitely I would say couple of hundred meters maybe even up to about a kilometer obviously if it's a leopard soaring that's going to be a bit different but sort of maybe a subtle sound I'm not sure here he comes right in front of the car that's me there's the hood of the car that you can just see all the tire that's on top how cool is that so relaxed not even glancing back at us and now back onto the road the easiest place to walk and he's heading straight along Twin Dams Road now just very, very gradual pace, going back towards Voyatella Dam. Maybe he's going to try his luck with all those Impala that uh, head up to a quarantine, which are open plains behind camp, and try his luck there. Or perhaps he's going to hop into the lodge and see if he can catch an Inyala at Voyatella or Galago. But first, something on the ground that's caught his eye. I just want to reposition Darby very quickly just so I can give these guys a better view. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull off the road just slightly and them head though as well so they can as well so they can get a good view. There we go we'll just watch him before he disappears around the corner. Just shuffle out the way for you. But that's amazing. There he goes. So 
I know there are some technical gremlins in this little drainage dip where he's heading to now. Um, so we're going to let Johan go first and keep up with him. And then we will make our, we'll make our move in next. Very cool. So walking on the road seems to be a trend this afternoon because that's exactly where Shidulu is. Well, Shildudu isn't doing any walking at the moment. She is very much taking it easy on the road. Now, there's some biting flies annoying her a little bit earlier. But as it gets cooler and later in the evening, a lot of those biting flies start becoming less active. So you can see carefully you can just see some very small ones around her ears that's why they keep flicking from time to time uh, the majority of the the smaller biting fly species we get here in the sabi sands are called stable flies and uh, they are also pains to domestic animals such as cats and dogs uh, and even horses Yeah, so I'm going to be keeping quiet for a little bit. We're going to be having um, some people from out there somewhere joining us. So I'm going to be quiet for a second. A uh, big welcome to all of you joining us wherever you might be in the world. You are now on a live game drive coming to you from the magnificent South Africa. I'm currently in the northeastern corner of South Africa. My name is Brent Leo Smith and I have my good friend Senzom Keys on camera and we're with a female leopard now this is happening at this very second so if you have any questions for us please pop them on the feed below so we are as I said in the northeastern corner of South Africa in the greater Kruger National Park you will hear some other people talking there are some people visiting South Africa to go on their very own safari to see these incredible animals up close and personal now this is a female leopard she's just under or just over three years old her name is Shidulu now Shidulu means termite mound in the local Shangan language we're in the province of Mpumalanga which means where the sun comes out Mpuma to come out Langa sun so we're in the eastern side of the country and as I said we're within the greater Kruger National Park um, which is an 8 million acre wildlife wonderland where these animals are able to live out their lives happy and free and without human intervention. So this is a completely wild ecosystem. This is not a zoo. This animal has not been hand reared or fed. It has had to feed itself and fend for itself from a very young age after becoming independent of its mother. There we go. You can see the classic paw, bottom paw of a leopard there. Isn't she absolutely gorgeous? Well, Bridget, I agree with you 100%. Wildlife and nature are indeed spectacular. And there are seldom things more spectacular than one of the most elusive cats in Africa, the leopard. Now, this is a very special part of the world because it has the most habituated leopards in Africa in my opinion so this is the best place to come see leopards in the whole of Africa uh, in the Sabi Sands game reserve in South Africa and remember there's no fences between the different game reserves here so the animals are able to wander wild and free between where they are and that ensures that their natural genetics uh, 
stay very very solid and and this population will be good for many years to come now of course if you ever do visit South Africa you don't have to go on safari in a car you can even go on a safari on foot so we're going to give you a little taste of what that's like right now Yes, indeed, everyone. And I tell you what, one of the best ways to experience South Africa is, in fact, out on foot. Why? Because we get to feel everything with our feet. We're running our hands through the grass. We're getting to listen to the birds. We're getting to smell all the smells. Um, and we're up close and personal with the real African bush. Now, South Africa has some of the best guides and trackers in the industry, and I tell you what, we can get you up close and personal with some of the big five as well. That's not always the idea, because we want to see the smaller things, the little insects, the arthropods, where the birds are nesting, uh, lots of things like where elephants drop their dung, uh, such as this one. This one is a little bit old, but always nice to see the little arthropods and termites that are now uh, inside the dung there as well. This is something that you wouldn't be able to do on a vehicle and uh, I tell you what it is absolutely amazing to get out on foot here uh, and we can break it open we can smell it and it is such a wonderful smell to have elephant on your hands uh, and be on their stomping grounds right where they've been walking we can take their tracks we can try to find them and I've heard that there's a leopard nearby here and we're going to try and follow up on that and see now that's something that you could be doing if you came to South Africa um, but let's just continue on a little bit and see what else we can find as we go here through the bush. And we've got such wonderful vegetation. Uh, this is the low felt, the bush felt, uh, as we call it here, locally. And um, wonderful trees and plants. We've got a lot of uh, specific uh, um, endemic uh, plants around here. And here's something quite special that I've just spotted on a log. This is uh, some bracket fungus. Now, this stuff is quite special because it only grows on dead or dying uh, tree uh, bark. And what do we use this for if we had to be out in the bush? Maybe we want to sleep out tonight and we want to do a bit of bush craft. You can use this as a very good fire lighter. It's flammable, so um, you can use that if you had to be rubbing sticks together. And that's something very impressive there. Now... That sun is just dropping down below the horizon. It's getting a little bit late. We don't want to be caught out here in the dark. So we're going to start heading back towards camp. And I tell you what, while we do that and see what else we can find, let's head you on back to Brent with that wonderful leopard. Well, she's still having a lovely snooze out in the road as the, it starts getting cooler. The predators like lions and leopards start getting moving and that's why Ralph's got to get back to camp before it gets too late. Now she is a young female, just over three years old, Ian. So she's just taken over uh, territory and uh, she has been seen mating with one of the dominant males here, which means that hopefully in the next three months or so, she'll be bringing us a lovely new litter of little leopards to wow us. Hi, MyTube. Uh, we do see lions quite a lot, MyTube. Unfortunately, we don't see any tigers as we are in Africa, and tigers only occur in Asia. So if you want to see tigers, the best place to go is probably India. You're not going to see any out here. We see lions, leopards, cheetahs, elephants, uh, two species of rhinoceros, buffalo, giraffe, those are all iconic African species that can all be seen in South Africa. At one of the very many national parks spread all the way from the Cape up unto the north and the Limpopo province. So we are very blessed with huge amounts of natural diversity in South Africa in our different natural parks and wonderful different places to stay at all over the country, whatever suits you, from the beach to the bush, to the bush and the beach combined into one.
almost looked like it was about time to wake up. Uh, then she's probably going to wait for it to get a little bit darker. And uh, that's when she has advantage over the potential prey like Impala and Kudu and Inyala. Curious one, indeed you can go on a horseback safari in South Africa. However, you want to avoid the big cats when doing so. But yes, indeed, there are many different places you are able to go on a horseback safari. You can go horse riding, horseback riding down a beach if you want to. Hello, Patricia. Uh, Patricia, we do have menalistic leopards. For those of you who don't know what menalistic leopards are, it is a black leopard. Um, it is basically a leopard that has uh, in, got a, a, gene oh, a, a recessive genetic gene that increases the amount of menalism. Menalism is the dark colored you see on the leopard there, and it produces it all over its body. And uh, we do, they are very, very rare, but there, there was a, quite a, a few of them seen, probably about 70 or 80 kilometers from here as the crow flies. And uh, so, yes, we do get black leopards there, however, are very rare. Now, as I was saying, this is probably the best area in the world to watch leopards, because I'm not the only one sitting with a leopard. Let's go see another leopard with my friend Taylor. So how incredible is that on Juma Private Game Reserve, the same place that Brent is driving around, we too have a leopard. My name is Taylor McCurdy and on camera with me today is David and we're very happy uh, to join you on the Spotted Cat Safari because that's what it is when you come to the Sabi Sand uh, in the Greater Kruger. Now you will also see some other vehicles on safari with us. Uh, and they're smiling from ear to ear to see this beautiful cat with rosettes. And the other thing that's so great about the Greater Kruger National Park is that the cats are very, very relaxed here. You can see the other vehicle just moving off the road to give him a bit of space, but he is not perturbed at all. Now remember, this is a live safari. It's happening right now. So if you have any questions for us, I'd be happy to answer them. And all you have to keep doing is just keep commenting on the chat. Sharon, you've said that these leopards are so beautiful. They are indeed. Now, this is a young boy. Uh, he goes by the name of Hosanna, and he's, um, well, got a bit of royalty to him as uh, he's from a very, very, well, he's the son of a very, very famous leopard named Karula that once used to roam around this area, but sadly he's not around anymore. So he's quite young, a little bit inexperienced on the hunting front, but he will get there. He's, uh, well, well driven to try and hunt you. So he's looking a little lean and that's what he's doing now. He's looking for his next potential meal. Now he's just just gone off into the thicket somewhere and this is the other thing about these cats is that they just disappear like you have absolutely no idea. See all the other guests all looking off here? So he must have gone just... Okay, you got him. Oh, there he goes. Yes, there he goes. Literally just seeing his tail slink around the corner. There he goes. Amazing. Right. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I hope that you enjoyed, well, this uh, leopard-filled um, safari. And if you ever want to come and see leopards, the best place to do that, of course, is the Sabi Sand Viltain here in South Africa. But from all of us, the Wild Earth team, thank you very much. And if you'd like to continue watching and follow Shidulu and Hosanna, all you have to do is Google us Safari Live. Until then, cheerio. Hello, regular viewers. That's my favorite part when they say, you are back with regular viewers now.
Okay. Right. Uh, I'm not on a way Hosanna has gone, however. Again, he's slinking into a very, very thick area. We're just off Twin Dams. We're maybe about 800 meters or so from uh, Voyatella Dam, so we're not far at all. Except this section of the bush is not great. I mean, we waited for, a, what, about eight minutes or so for him to come out. So we're going to see if we can find a way in there. I've seen my little gap under the bush willow archway, but while we navigate through this thicket, off you go, back to Brent. Well, Shadulu's head is up as the temperature keeps dropping steadily. Uh, she might be up and on the move shortly. Oh, there's a Franklin coming up towards her. That's what she spotted. But they've spotted each other. There you go. There's a few Franklins flapping about that's occasionally attracting her attention. You see, she's still panting quite heavily, even though the temperature is dropping steadily. There we go. There's some toofies. Uh, Rick, this, I'd say Shadulu's quite a bit taller than Tandy. Uh, she is quite a bit younger as well, but I would say she's got a few kilograms on Tandy. I'd say she is bigger, a bigger leopard than Tandy is. And it, it's quite visible in her tracks. Her tracks are noticeably bigger than Tandy's tracks. Now I know Ralph is nearly home, but he's got one last thing or two to show you yet. Yes, everyone, we've come out here to um, quarantine where we did hear that there were some uh, Impala alarm calls. But uh, I think it took us a little bit long to get here. And I think that, that predator, possibly a leopard, has probably shifted on. But while we've, while we've come through here... Um, every day uh, we see a lot of wildebeest out here on this plains here in quarantine. And um, this particular site here is very interesting because this would be where a bull, um, a wildebeest, would come and advertise himself uh, quite uh, prolifer prolifically. And uh, what he'd do is you see a lot of scrape marks. He's got um, glands between his toes that he's scratching away here. He will urinate and defecate all on this particular site. And you can see... This has been used quite regularly um, and over a number of years, I would say, as well. It's nice and bare now, a lot of scratching, there's hardly any grass, so, and he's making a lot of holes and a lot of defecation as well. And look at this because this can often be confused. You see, when there's a lot of water in wildebeest dung, it can actually be confused for buffalo because it can be uh, quite a lot more sloppy than that as well. Um, but the, the sort of pieces that we're looking for that really identify it as wildebeest are these little uh, sort of pellets here. And if I can just get one in, I'll show you. That's there. And it can also be quite similar to that of waterbuck. But with it being on a complete midden like this and with us seeing so many of these wildebeest around, we know that this is a territorial bull that's trying to establish himself in this area or has established himself in this area and advertising to the females. Sometimes you'll have the females also come and defecate and urinate in the area as well. And then what he'll do is he'll be picking up their scents um, and using that Jake, Jacobson's organ in the back of his mouth, doing the phlegm and grimace. His head in the air like that. And then he's using that, interpreting the smell of the female and um, uh, uh, realizing where they are within their sort of uh, reproductive cycle. So very interesting sight. This It's almost like a, a bit of a coffee shop. This is where the, the wildebeest come to uh, talk about where they are, who's who in the zoo, where they are in the system, etc. So this is a this is an animal's version of a, of a lovely coffee shop, um, as we would say, as humans. So, everyone, it's getting quite dark. We've got that lovely, beautiful pink-blue colours now starting to come 
through. Uh, the sun has nicely set and uh, we're going to head towards camp because it's not safe for us out on foot in the dark. So while we do that, heading off to camp, let's head you off to Taylor and uh, see how she's going. Bye-bye, Ralphie. Walk home safely or hopefully you're quite close to home because you're quite right, yes, it is dark. It's very dark tonight. I feel like it's not even 6 o'clock yet. I actually don't know what the time is, but um, it, I think it'll be close to that, but it is indeed getting darker and darker by the day. 10 to 6 Central African time in the p.m., according to Kirsten, who's directing. So... Unfortunately, oh, I've got little side lights. Unfortunately, we lost Hosanna, the area that he went into uh, to try and navigate through during the day is one thing. At night, virtually impossible. So we have decided to just, well, call it a night. And I think we had a good view of him anyways. He'll eventually pop out at some point. So keep an eye out on the dam cam if you are going to be watching. He's headed in that direction. Or maybe you'll get to see him. But, um, well, I suppose it's all exciting now. It's a nice warm evening, relatively warm evening. We should be seeing things like chameleons. I think we might see a couple of bush babies bounding about, which would be nice. Uh, who knows what else? I'm definitely going to be heading towards the open plains behind camp to look for those honey badgers that Tristan saw not so long ago. But Chidulu's on the move once again. I wonder where she's off to. Well, she is still heading north, but she's taken a slightly de deviated route from where she was, so she should be within Juma for a bit longer, and I'm hoping maybe she spots something to hunt while she's walking through here. There we go. You can just see her up ahead in the road, marching along, stopping for a little sniff and a scent mark every now and then. Isn't she beautiful? Look how low her tail is sitting to the ground. It's actually almost touching the ground. Oh dear. Off road we go. Okay, this could get fun. Um, leopards, are, what makes leopards so resilient, Mina Moo? Oh, what happened there? She's just scent marking. Or did she try to grab something? Scent marking. And then he saw a bush jumping up and down. Where's she going? Ah. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you know, try a stick with her here. But it's uh, millions of years of evolution makes them resilient, uh, Minamu. They uh, evolved to be able to eat rotten meat and drink horrible things and survive. Oh, dear. Oh, there she is. This is not, this is not a fun block. As you can see, she's heading into some terminalia thickets. Stopping, listening, hoping to hear some dinner up ahead. So at this time of the year, the leopards are relying a lot on their ears to find food because of the height of the grass. And they often can't actually see what they start stalking till they get much closer. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to try keep. I'm gonna try keep up with her through this difficult area. Uh, while we do that, let's go see if Taylor has managed to find. Hosanna again.
No, Brenty, sadly, I don't want to break a second car. Guess what I did yesterday? Let me just make an online confession very quickly. You won't hear many of these. Um, basically, what happened when I was off-roading yesterday, I don't know what happened to Brent's, uh, well, some guard in the tire, I don't know what the technical terms are, um, was bent and was making funny noises, but I did bend the steering arm. Woohoo! I haven't done that for a while. So I definitely did that. I obviously, I, I don't try not to do it often, but I was off-roading severely and I did drive accidentally into a log, which was not intentional. Um, so yes, sorry Brenty for sending Rusty to the workshop, to the hospital. But Opa is, uh, well, sorting it all out and I suppose tomorrow it'll be back in the field again. I think Brent's going to ban me from driving Rusty. But anyways, he's a good sport about it. He actually didn't tease me this time. Normally he teases me a lot when I do things like that. So um, perhaps he's saving it. So like I said just before um, you saw us a moment ago, I've just popped up onto these big open plains behind camp because this crepuscular period, like it's not quite dark just yet. We'll actually stop and just have a little look because this tree line, this uh, area littered with silver cluster leaves and of course the beautiful mauves and oranges and blues. The oh. evening sky is, is lovely. So this is the last of the light now. This crepuscular period is when you often find a lot of the noct nocturnal creatures to be most active. So they, they're just leaving their burrows now. They're on the move. And I think that there must be honey badgers living up here somewhere. Well, hopefully. I don't even know. Is a snake for real? Did you? Is that what you said? Oh, is this fake or real? And then who was asking it? I'm so sorry, Kirsten. It just came. All I got was very muffled, and I heard it. Is a snake? Oh, Sneed, there we go. That's why. There were lots of S's in that. Well, what, what came across into my ears is that lots of S's, and I heard is there a snake for real. So, Sneed, you are not convinced that this is uh, real and it's happening right now? Well, if it was, they probably, if it wasn't, they probably would have cut out that section where I couldn't hear very well. So, yes, it is happening right now, and um, I look forward to uh, well answering one of your questions. Perhaps you'd like to ask me a question about maybe some of the nocturnal creatures that occur here, Snee. But we are in the Sabi Sand Viltain, which is one of the best wildlife areas in South Africa. We are basically neighbours onto the Greater Kruger National Park, which you may have heard is very famous, and lots of people like to come out here. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so ask us some questions. I look forward to it. So basically what I'm looking for now, Snee, is I'm going to try and avoid all the stink bugs because I was horribly attacked by them last night. And we are also going to be looking for chameleons because they're one of my favorite little critters uh, of all times. So we'll see if we can find any of those and any other, crit any other creatures, in fact. We might even see some snakes coiled up on a branch tonight. Wouldn't that be quite nice? Shall we go and check our snaky snake road? or aka Balanites Road. We're a little way away from it, but um, it's basically where I saw a Boomslang twice. We found it the night before and we came back in the morning and it was still coiled up on the same branch. So maybe we'll try and have a look and see if there are any other snaky participants within the area. Well, that'll be an idea, hey? Right, off we go. Okay. This is also quite a good area for chameleons. Actually, do you know who we have seen running around here is a civet once. I remember Tristan quickly jumped onto the radio and he may have even tried to phone one of us. He was, uh, I think he was leaving the reserve or he was going to drop someone. I can't remember. Oh, no, he was coming back from a town trip and he drove this road round about this time and a big old civet, which um, is an interesting looking creature. They kind of look like, how do I describe a civet? They look like a raccoon with a very sort of um, interesting body. Black and white, but a little bit bigger than a raccoon. I'll have to try and find you a picture, but almost like a cat-like face too. They're really funny looking things. And anyways, it was one that was running up and down here was quite relaxed. Oh. Now there's, there's a challenge that's been issued. And for those of you who know me quite well, you know that I'm well, little bit competitive. Uh, so Strawhead, you want me to try and find you a chameleon, not a chameleon, a scorpion on a tree. And Kirsten has then mentioned that Byron would try. So we're looking. Shall we just start on this marula tree? 
To me, if I was going to find a scorpion, I'd probably find it in this, maybe this broken branch area because there's lots of crevices that it can hide away during the day. But sadly, it doesn't look like it. There's ants though, some very busy ants. I'm going to, I wonder if I, I go down a little bit. There we go, you've got them now. I'm not going to shine directly on them, but I'll just light them up just a little bit. So no scorpion, I'm afraid, but some ants that are very, very busy moving around. I don't see them carrying any eggs or anything. I wonder if they're headed home. Or perhaps they're a little bit nocturnal. Anyway, it's quite cool. And um, you know what I'm really hoping for over the next few years is that somebody's going to invent and then... Oh, we need to go up here. We need to go up Zoe's Road. Uh, in invent a industrial UV light. Like one that is as powerful as the spotlight that I'm yielding at the moment. Then I could shine that beautiful UV light on all the trees and I would find uh, chameleons very well. I'd also find scorpions even better. And that's one of the coolest things to do. I've got a little UV light, so if we do find a scorpion, I'll, well, shake the light around because I think my batteries are dying. I've just been lazy and I haven't actually got new batteries for that scorpion torch. But I am going on holiday soon, so I'll, I'll correct that and get it all sorted and um, so yeah it would be quite nice to find a scorpion also it was byron's birthday yesterday did everybody say happy birthday to byron i'm pretty sure it was yesterday i don't think it was was it today was it no it was yes it was the 22nd well i'm so sorry i was supposed to tell you all that it was byron's birthday so that you could go and well message him you can still do that you can still do that on twitter i'm pretty sure birthday messages so there we go byron a very happy belated birthday from all the wild earth members right off you go back to brain to at least has got a cat yes we are still managing to just keep up with her fortunately she's not moving at speed through the bush but you can see we've switched out into infrared we're the only vehicle here now I mean, she is on the hunt. She's not starving by any means, but she could do with a meal. I actually haven't seen a really fat leopard, actually, apart from Hasana. Oh, where is she disappearing into now? Oh, she's going to cut. She's right there. Oh, back. Change direction. You can just hear her moving through the grass. Now, I'm just trying to see if we can spot her again. She was moving back behind us. You see her, Sins? Uh, the difference between a black... Oh, sorry, Sins, you okay? You okay? Um, the difference between a, a black leopard and a panther, Kenneth, there she is. Oh, terror. Is uh, absolutely nothing. They are the same thing. A black panther uh, is a minimalistic leopard. Oh, she's really giving us a hard time. Watch your head, Sens. Are we okay behind us? Getting out of here is going to be fun. Uh, we saw it disappearing through here. And you can see how difficult this terrain is. I mean, this is difficult country during the, the day. So the last place I spotted her was around here. There she is. Now, she, there's a road parallel to us, but she just doesn't want to go there. So yours is trying to find me, so I'm putting my spotlight up in there. Yours, you see my light? Okay. Um, I've lost sight of her. She disappeared behind this 
very thick patch. Um, I'll try to find her again, but I think uh, we might not be in luck. This is just, it's getting worse and worse as I get in here. Uh, so let's send you back to Taylor while I try navigate my way out. And hopefully Shadulu's doing the same thing. Well, you're having much better luck than I am, Brent. I can't even find a leaf on a tree. <laughs> Just jokes. We, of course, can find many leaves on trees, but that's not what we're looking for tonight. We're looking for things that resemble leaves on trees. Snakes and chameleons and katydids, which is a type of insect, or grasshoppers. Not Maybe, a, maybe not a grasshopper. What about a, a bladder grasshopper? Might see some of them. Uh, I haven't actually seen either of those insects for a very long time, funny enough, so we'll definitely be keeping an eye out on them. They're quite interesting. And then I'm just basically scanning from tree to tree. I've got a very concentrated spotlight at the moment. It's not as big as the ones that are on uh, Rusty and on Wendy, which give off a little bit more of a beam, which actually can help. But we will make it work. Okay, maybe we find a leopard in the tree. I mean, that will be good as well. That's not uh, impossible. And then, of course, if you see Hosanna pop up anywhere on the dam, go for it. Let me know. Hashtag Safari Live. Now, Mr. Public, something that you probably won't see while we're on Safari because they're exceptionally good at flying fairly quickly and high in the sky are the bats. So that's probably why you haven't seen one. Uh, we don't often actually see them. Sometimes if you've got thatched roofs or an area where there is quite a bit of um, well, a nice high, high roofed sort of area, you can see the bats sort of uh, roosting up on the, the rafters during uh, the day. But um, otherwise you don't really see them. I mean, they're just a little silhouette in the sky. I haven't even heard any tonight. And normally it's a very high pitched sort of clicking sound that you can hear swooping down as they snatch up all the mosquitoes, which is why I like bats so much. They can eat hundreds of mosquitoes in in an evening now, there are some big um, bigger bats that don't just feed on of course uh well insects there's some that feed on fruit too so there's a variety of sorts but you know to be honest i'm trying to even think what bats i've seen i think i've seen mm, the epauletted fruit bat if I'm not mistaken. I think I've seen like one kind of bat since I've been out here, and that wasn't even here. That was down at Skakuza Airport, so down far south, and um, sort of on the border of the Kruger National Park and the Sabi Sands, somewhere in the middle. Just checking to see. This is quite a popular junction with a lot of the animals. I am going to go down the Snake Road, though, aka Balanites Road. Whether we will see a snake down here, I don't know. I hope so. I've been wanting to see a puff adder for a very very long time and it, it's something that i have been lucky uh, of seeing quite a bit of not the puff adder the cycle they've been hiding away from me but i've seen lots of boom slungs and mumbers which has been quite nice juvenile and uh, boom slung remember that it was really cool we heard the the birds chatting around with uh, craig aka batman uh, that might be the only bat that you see occasionally but even he is elusive on screen you don't get to see him very often. Sometimes I just try and like just do one of these and whip the camera around uh, in order to show you who is behind the screen. Not everybody's willing. David's quite willing though. Hey, David. Some. Oh no, he's gone and he's confused me. He said sometimes. Hey. <laughs> Anyways, David doesn't want to be on camera tonight. He says he doesn't look good after six o'clock in the afternoon. We'll have to wait until we get him in first thing in the morning. Yeah. David when you're looking dashing and wiping the sleep out of your eyes anyways Brent was not so confident in finding Shadulu but he should give himself a little bit more credit well lucky enough she popped out onto the road exactly where we were, where we were making for and she has been heading towards the Buffalo sign all all afternoon just taking some detours on the way but there we go, luckily for us, she did pop out exactly where we hoped she would. Now, this is a, a popular corner for males and females to scent mark. That's why she's, she is smelling so intently. Now, 
Yes, but very unnoticeably, Shorehead, they have a winter and summer coat. Their, their coat will thicken a little bit during the winter, but not much. Is he showing a bit of a f sniffing, sniffing, sniffing? I wonder if Tingana came and sent Mark Chair. Um, it could also, Gajima has been seen in this area, and Hukumuri. So this is a, a popular sort of signposting spot, this particular little junction here. And she's very, very intent on what other, smelling what other leopard, other leopard might have been here. Now, Ravina, if Tingana comes across Shadulu um, and she's an estrus, he'll probably try a mate with her. Um, if she's not, uh, and she's got a kill, he'll probably try steal the kill. Uh, and he would treat her as he would treat other females within his territory. She is really, really sniffing. Oh, and she's on the move again. Oh, she is a pretty cat. Pretty cat. Okay, let's try to keep up with that. Hopefully she doesn't take us on too much of a wild goose chase after what she's done. Nice to have her on the road again for a little bit. So it's going to be very interesting to see what she does here. Whether she's going to cut into the north or she's going to cut back towards the west. So we're going right to the sort of northwestern corner of Juma, uh, right on the boundary where it shares a boundary with Arethusa and with Buffalo's Hook. Oh, sorry, Sibambili and Buffalo's Hook. I'm just going to try and move across so yours can also get a view. Tokyo, I am on board with you. She does have such an intense look about her. It is awesome. She always seems like she's on a mission. Now, that's probably a lot to do with her age and the fact that she is trying to establish herself as the dominant female in this area. She's smelt something again. She's heading back straight towards us. Uh, possibly another scent mark there. Let's just see what she does quickly. And uh, Taylor's stink bud invasion is in full force tonight. Since you mind just turning off the presenter light for a second because these bugs are just taking me apart. Thank you very much. Taylor's stink bug invasion has found me this evening. So you can see she's stopping at the prominent bushes where males would normally mark and females. But I think that Senzo is also being attacked by stink bugs now. It's sort of a, an almond like smell, but not quite. And uh, I've managed to accidentally push on one, so all I can smell is stink bug at the moment. So here we go, you can see she's very actively sniffing those spots where possibly Hokumuri, Gajima, and uh, even Tingana might have sent marked in the last couple of days since the rain. There we go. She's had a good whiff. And we're off on patrol again.
Okay, while we keep up with Shadidi, uh, let's send you back to Madam McCur... Oh, wait, no, let's stay with us. She's just heard something in the bush right next to us. I think it was a Franklin that sort of fluttered in the tree. She's still listening quite intently. Sounded like a bird. I'm not sure. She's still listening. And you see how opportunistic these big cats are. Oh, there's something coming in right next to us. Oh, it's a hyena. There's a hyena right next to us here, Sense. So, hyena's probably been trailing her for a while, picking up on her scent. Maybe that's what she heard. Now let's go to her, look at her behavior change. And she's going to try to move away from that hyena as quickly as possible. And hyena hasn't quite seen her yet, but has definitely been smelling her. All right, and just have a look. Oh, she's seeing, there we go. She's just turned down Aubrey's road. See, the hyena hasn't spotted her. He's still sniffing. He's, he's behind. Oh, there she's watching the hyena. Let's get a bit closer. Now these little interactions happen every day out here. Uh, between the different predators, uh, lions chasing leopards, chasing hyenas, hyenas trailing leopards. Oh, I've got a stick st or stone stuck in my brakes. It's making a horrible noise. I do apologize and just try to get rid of it. There we go. Oh, no, I thought I'd won, but I haven't. So hyenas will, will follow leopards like this regularly to try steal a potential Pray, a piece of prey from me. Oh, I'm so sorry about the squeaky brakes. You all know how much. Oh, there you go. Hyena's given up. There we go, Sense. There we go. Hyena's given up. And she's jogged on. Now, the hyena might not have given up completely. But she is jogged on. She's actually, I just saw some impala to the right. Now, Yes, bone to unless they were fighting over a kill or she was fighting to defend her cubs. So as a normal rule, uh, follow them. Uh, the hyenas will follow the leopards, keep an eye on them, and uh, see if they can possibly get a free meal out of it. Let's see if that hyena is still trailing for the hair. Doesn't look like it. There we go. So she's carrying on her patrol. She's lost her hyena tail. So that hyena would have come to have a look and notice that she's on the move. She doesn't have any kills around. And so he's decided it's not worth his while. So we're going to keep following her for the next little bit. So you can see she's walking. Now. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that, everybody. Brent will be back with you in a jiffy. Now, I've turned my headlights off because I refuse to be attacked by stink bugs for a second time. Yesterday was, well, interesting to say the least when I had a stink by, stink by, stink bug fly into my eye then panic because it was trapped between my eyelids and then released its wonderful chemical defense which I've never ever felt it was like the equivalent of pouring Tabasco sauce into my eye and then also one into my mouth so I jumped off the car and well it was not pleasant for poor Senzo so sorry Senzo again it was not nice and uh, I was very sick. So I've turned my headlights off and I will continue to drive without them. We'll be going very slowly though. They're not flying down my shirt. They're crawling up my shorts. It is horrible. How are we going to fend ourselves from these stink bugs? Because not only do they go for your face, but they try to crawl in amongst your clothes. Get away as well. Just stomp the ones that are by my feet just to teach them all a lesson. Anyway, Shadulus also seem to be fleeing to higher ground. 
Yes, well, a different hyena has approached her, so she just leapt up a tree, well out of reach of the hyena, and looking down disdainfully. Oh, let's have a seat. Might as well. You can see she doesn't look particularly perturbed. Uh, if we look back down towards the hyena, you can see giving up. Oh, no, let's stop for a scratch. Scratch, 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 scratch. But, and say, when these hyenas realize that the, the leopard doesn't have a kill, they might hang around the area, but they're not likely to actually pounce on, pounce on her or try attack her. She's a nice source of easy f food for them. And especially if she grabs something big like an impala, hyenas are quite often able to steal that carcass away from her before she is able to put it up a tree. She has been giving us a magnificent display. Ah, uh, Laura Moore, yes indeed. She, this is a gorgeous picture. She is a gorgeous leopard. I'm going to check in the road, see if the hyena is still there. Ah, hyena is gone. So, Ashton, oh, she's going to come down. Yes, leopards do naturally seek dominance over each other. Um, if you are dominant, you are able to breed, you are able to produce young, you are able to pass on your genetic line. And that's what these animals really want to do. So, unfortunately, if I move the car, I am in a bit of a gremlin area, but she will be moving through it shortly. So, we'll try to stick with her for as long as possible. Okay, well, we keep an eye on her and make sure we don't lose her before the end of the show. Let's go see where Taylor is and how her war on the stink bugs is going. I don't like them, not even a little bit. Anybody got any advice when you're driving around in the middle of the wilderness to try and evade stink bugs? Do I need to bring a mosquito net out and game drive and just cover myself with it and drive like that? Although that's not going to stop them from sitting on me. And then the worst thing is, is that they just panic. They suck, suck, they land on you and they go, ah! And then they go, I'm so frightened and scared. And then they release that horrible chemical fence. And the smell is what gets me the most because I've unfortunately had some very, very traumatic experiences in Zambia where... <sighs> I just, I can't even tell you, we'd just be sitting there eating dinner innocently and the next minute you crunch down on something that was not a part of your meal. That is not nice. <laughs> that is a horrifying experience. Now, Cindy, I'm so glad that you've asked this question because I've been wanting to talk about it for so long and I'm going to repeat the question. You're wondering exactly what is the purpose does a, that a stink bug plays in the animal kingdom? They are solely out here to annoy people. They try and get in your eyes. They try and get in your hair, your food, your mouth. They're just here to keep us on our toes and just to remind us why maybe we're not the strongest living thing out here in the wilderness. Because how's that? A human can crumble as soon as they eat or bite down on one stink bug. I promise you, you'll see a man that is seven foot and he will even succumb to a stink bug. I promise you right now. No, um, I don't actually know what the ecological role of a stink bug is. Um, I would also like to know. Like I said, I'm, I, they've made me drive around without headlights. I put one light on, on the left and I'm yielding my spotlight. I'm trying to lure them off to the left. In fact, so they're going to David. <laughs> I'm busted. David's caught me. Lorne, you said I should bring perfume. Right, let's go back to camp. Let's, <laughs> let's get the perfume out. I don't have much left, but we'll give it myself a little spritz and we can give it a bash. Lorne, is there a particular type of perfume, perhaps? You know, do, I don't want to be the same scent as the stink bugs, that's for sure. But we will, we'll look for something. I'm trying to think because I'm... 
Lioness, I don't know if a Ferrari Safari is going to work because they just hit you harder then. So I'm probably going to skip that one. But thank you for all your tips. I appreciate them. Please keep them coming. Um, so the other thing is, I don't actually know where I was going with this now. I'm trying to think what actually eats a stink bug because I can't ever say that I've ever seen anything eating a stink bug before other than humans involuntarily, in, uh, you know, ingesting them. Um, so... Yeah, I, I don't know. It's not my favorite. Um, but maybe Brent knows the ecological role of a stink bug. Like I said, I'm convinced. I'm convinced it's just to annoy us and to, to keep us on our toes and to, mind, to remind us how weak we are. Oh, Marge, that's my thing. Hey, about burning elephant dung in the old can. You know what? I've got a feeling that of all the things that elephant dung can keep away, bees, wasps, Tetsi flies, flies, mosquitoes, all these wonderful things. I do not think it's going to keep them the um, stink bug away. I think the stink bug has got power and that it will be able to beat the um, the, the smell. I was going to say stench, but then I was like, but that but that beautiful, wonderful elephant dung does definitely not, uh, not smell. It smells lovely. It smells like a variety of tea. I suppose it depends on what the elephant's been eating, though. And so yeah, so I don't know if that's uh, that's gonna work. Actually, this technique, touch wood, seems to be doing the job right now. I'm not touch wood again. I'm just gonna keep doing it. Everybody at home, touch your wooden desks, your chairs, whatever you need to. Please help me. Uh, I don't seem to be being attacked right now in the face. They all oh, they are being the lured. I'm just watching insects sort of zip past every now and then. I get like a little reflection of one going past. And then I'll shine my spotlight away from my face like that. The only thing that we have against us is the presenter light. Because that's sitting right behind us. And that lures the insects. But um, without the bright headlights on, I'm also doing this. As they, as they come towards me. Because I can also see them a little bit every now and then with the spotlight. You see all the insects. <laughs> Kirsten said I was like the Matrix. If I was like the Matrix, I'd be like this. Shoo. Yo doing things like that I'm not though because it kind of puts your back out so <laughs> definitely getting older now I used to be so nimble I don't know what's going on oh goodness right Brent has unfortunately got no signal and um, so we will just keep talking about the stink bugs because it doesn't seem to be anything else out. I'm also hoping I don't drive into one of these marula trees that are growing so dangerously close to the edge of the road normally I wouldn't be afraid of the marula trees but uh, with no lights and just a little spotlight, a little bit of a problem. We look at some impala now. Oh my goodness, how did they get up my shorts? I don't know. <laughs> how they get up my pants, but it's very upsetting. Whew. Kirsten, may we please go into infrared? Pretty please? Go away. In yeah, we're going into infrared now because there's something to the left that I would very much like to show you. There it is. Though so we're in black and white now, using a special light that only the animals can can't, they can't see. What was that? No. Sorry, I heard a snort. Might be some wildebeest. No, it's not. It's one of the safari vehicles starting up. Here we have some Impala on their way up to the open plains of quarantine, uh, which again is the plains behind camp, which they do on a regular basis, pretty much every single night between the wildebeest, a couple of Inyala here and there scattered in between the Impala, and then, well, of course, the Impala, as I just mentioned, seem to make up the bulk of the animal species that uh, linger on up here. They don't seem to be too bothered by the stink bugs, Although I don't think that young Impala Ram that's grooming himself at the moment would enjoy eating a stink bug if he got one stuck in his teeth. Shamson, you've suggested garlic spray. Well, I wouldn't mind that. David, how would you feel like uh, garlic. you love garlic? Yeah. Right, garlic spray it is. I don't know about the other cameramen, however, and anybody else that uh, has to well, pass a few meters uh, near me will, will unfortunately have to deal with the stench of garlic. Wouldn't that? I like it. Yes, and Kirsten has just reminded me it would keep the vampire bats away too, so it might be a good idea. I'll be spritzing garlic, or perhaps I'll just take cloves, maybe roast them, 
and mush them over my skin. Maybe there's some amazing uh, a beauty product uh, sort of to it. Who knows? I'll be the guinea pig. I'll test it out for all of you. But um, yes, so we'll be maybe giving that a bash. And I do normally put heaps of garlic on everything, sometimes even in my cornflakes. I'm just joking. Of course, don't do that. That would be revolting. But it's been a very exciting afternoon. I'm sure you'll all agree, filled with that of rosettes, Hosanna and Shidulu. Who knows? Maybe they're going to be around tomorrow morning to join us on the Sunrise Safari. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.